Welcome to Mostly Superheroes. I like how we open it with a, a beer cracking. Andy, Mike. Logan. Welcome back. The boys are back. The boys are back. I didn't even think we were going to get in here this week. And here we are. Welcome back to uh, Mostly Superheroes. How are you guys? Great. Just straight up addicted. Can't stay away, you know? Did you guys watch the last episode you were on already? I mean, surely oh, like yeah. more than yeah. once, maybe yeah. at this point. Oh yeah, Episode. all those all those views. Most of those are mine. <laughs> as long as they're going up, I don't I don't care. <laughs> just keep refreshing. Oops, there's another view. Oops, there's another one. Let it just play in the black background. Yeah. We appreciate that. Um, that was a jam packed episode. It's episode long. ten. Like we, we talked about it when we were done. We're like that was like two and a half hours of content. We're like, man, didn't feel like that. Um, and we have a lot today again too. It's just a. Uh, Stuff keeps coming out. Yeah, it doesn't stop. I mean, it's just a content machine. Everything yeah. Going. Well, um, because we have so much, not to say I'd, I like having the long ones. I can watch, it was, I think it was two hours and 30 minutes, six minutes or something. Yeah. I was like, I can do this. But for the sake of staying on schedule, I have a jam packed list of slides here. Um, but just a high level, if, you, you know, if you're a first time listener, first of all, welcome to the show. Um, if you don't realize we're on episode 12 here, so we're, we're moving along. Um, these guys just came in for a big episode 10 and I just did uh, episode 11 on the boys. So we've been covering the boys here every week with those weekly drops. These two are still catching up. So you'll let me know when you're oh, yeah. back to <clears throat> on the schedule. And then, um, but today we're going to do a few new things. First of all, I'm trying out a few, not a few new, like segments. You mentioned that last time, Mike, yeah. I was like. Yeah, let's try to get some segments going. So first up, we're going to just open up with. Do you want to like play? Do you get it? I mean. Fangirl? Our biggest fan? No, that's male. I can see. I can't see. I just saw a circle. It's a. Oh, yeah. I see it. Oh, sorry. These The new VHSs look like they're in your line of sight. Andy. (laughs) From the screen. I just saw a fan. I was like, yeah, fan. (laughs) Our biggest fan. (laughs) We got. I'm trying to play like charades on the spot hey, in the have, studio. We have some fangirls too. You don't know that. We got. We got fan. Well, this isn't meant to say fan mail, so I guess maybe my pun is off because fan it's boy. fan mail. Yeah, gotcha. Is the joke. You Jesus. got mail. I get it. Talk about it. It really like didn't boy, land. Girl, fan boy. Well, really... I want to start opening up with something for the fans. You know, doing a little fan acknowledgement, getting some people engaged by giving them some shout outs, and so I thought I'd open up with fan mail. Only problem is, we don't have any fan mail yet. Uh, (laughs) Spoiler. (laughs) So, I just wanted to prepare and say, like, if you're listening to the show, like you right now, like, stop and listen. Like, go to mostofsuperheroes.com and write us a letter. I don't care what it's about. I just want some fan mail. (laughs) I'd love to see. And we'll read them on air. We'll give you shout outs. Absolutely. Maybe a koozie your way or something like that. Absolutely. We'll get something going. But... Uh, there is a celebration today. I don't know if you guys saw it on our Instagram. We did reach 100 followers. Hey! hey Benjamin. Hey. And, I mean, when you look at big podcasts and stuff, 100 might seem like a small number to some of you guys. I literally, I get so pumped up about every single follow. Like, anytime I see somebody like a, a post or a, a clip that caught their interest, and now you're giving this podcast a chance... We appreciate it. Yeah, that's awesome. Agreed. That's awesome. So, celebratory uh, thing. We did give some shout outs on Instagram. Go check us out over there. And if you reach out to the show, you just heard us. We're going to give you some shout outs. But uh, you guys get any feedback? I know you have some friends that listen to the show that they've been enjoying it. Oh, yeah. Always. Yeah. I'm not, I haven't heard one one bad thing. Do they have any feedback of like things they'd like to see? That's something to think about. We'll keep that in mind when we'll we're talking to people. Yeah, I like that. That's... Yeah, I, I think they like how we're connecting different things. Like I told one buddy... We're going to talk possibly about A New Hope and Star Wars. And then we start talking. He's like, that's like came out 42 years ago. <laughs> but then I was like, well, we might do something a little twist on it. Um, so, it, I mean, everything's been positive that I've heard. It's weird for me to still watch and listen and see myself. Mm-hmm, our for thing. sure. Same here. But, uh, uh, so weird. It's, it's fun. And I think we put a spin on it that not really many people are doing out there. So. It's good with all these new types of things. We're going to try some stuff out. We have some stuff in the works that we're going to try out. Perfect. Yeah, and I uh, actually have a slide for that at the end. I kind of quantified some of the stuff that you, us three have been talking about. And we'll talk about the end so you can kind of get a heads up what's coming up on the show. But with that, let's uh, open up. We've opened with the fan mail. 
Like I said, we'll keep an eye out in the future. MostlySuperheroes.com. Shoot us a line. Let us know what you want to see. Next up, something I wanted to start trying, and I also wanted to try out, like, saying it in this voice. So, what you watching? <laughs> and, like, I would, might put some effects on it or something, and, like, every time we do the thing, it'll be, what you watching? You need a soundboard. That... I played with one today, and I didn't like any of the ones I had. I'm in the market for a good, good. soundboard. That should soundboard. be your first sound clip right there. Maybe it will be. So, uh, Andy, what you watching? Um, I don't even know what the voice is. Am I the Cookie God. Monster? <laughs> It almost reminds me of like the, uh, you know those videos, like Unforgivable, they were like in high oh school. Oh my gosh. Yeah. What y'all watching, hoes? And he's like, Unforgivable. Uh, he's like, get, get me a Dr. Pepper. <laughs> and he, he couldn't stop laughing. But, like middle school you, he's like, man, he's mad. That's real. <laughs> it's... But then you could see him like cracking up. What was, that? what was that on? YouTube. Just YouTube. Like, just YouTube. It was like one of the first viral videos, I feel like. <laughs> and she was like, uh, he's like, my girl was like, what are, we, what are we doing here? And he's like, she's like, what are we doing in this place? She's like, it's the mall. He's like, bitch, what are we doing in the mall? <laughs> <laughs> Give me a chicken sandwich. Give me and some muffin fries. <laughs> That's exactly. Wow, you guys are making me flashback. I forgot, I forgot about them. <laughs> Damn it, now I forgot what I was even watching. That's all right. I mean, Mike, you want to go first? Did you have something prepared? It's okay if you don't either. Well, this is just something I want to make sure that we all watch our own stuff in our personal lives. So I don't want to forget to ask people that are in the studio, well, what are you watching? So three things really that stand out. I'm trying to catch up with the boys. I finished season one, I think last week. Took a little bit of a break. Your your body needs and your mind needs a little break <laughs> mentally <laughs> from that. And then, uh, so I started season two. I finished episode one yesterday. Uh, doing Doom Patrol here and there. I think I'm on episode five now of Doom Patrol. Nice, nice. And then I had to be a good fiance. And this last week we watched The Hunger Games, all four movies. I've never seen them. Well, you're probably Preference. enjoying I've seen. them, I would They're, guess. It's done. I know what happens now. Oh, you've watched them? Yes. Yeah, we won't say spoilers right just yet, but we should plan to talk about this if you just watched the whole uh, series. Yeah, four movies. Should be a trilogy, but four but. movies. They split the last one like they, they Harry Pottered the last one. Should have, oh, yeah. should have been a trilogy, he says. <laughs> one less. Yeah. Could have done with one less. Yeah, but I mean, I guess you made like $800 million more probably doing it that way. I agree. Without giving any spoilers, I did feel that the last two of those films were very, they, they should have been one. Yeah, and if you look at like the ratings, like I was a geek and like went and looked at like their scores on different things and you could tell one and two are up here and three kind of Three and four kind of were in the basement. Not mm -hmm. basement. I mean, they still have like in the 60s and 70s, but it was entertaining. Mm. I'd say that. It was entertaining. I read the first book. I didn't read any more after that, but yeah, it was entertaining to if watch. If you, what type of scale do you guys usually use when you rate a movie? Is it like the five star? I like a 10 point scale, kind of like, kind of like bar pizza reviews. P pizza reviews. And that's just stuck in my head. Like Me too. He's I'll really like taken over the 10 point scale, but it's a great way to yeah. quantify something. And I do. I kind of. I mean, think of it as the letter grade too. So if I give something an eight point four, I know a grading scale that's a B. Like so, but I I like the eight point four because there's so much. I'm not just going to give it a B because then there could be a high B. It could be a that's a B. tough question. Why don't we stick with the ten no, for I, now, and we'll just see how it feels. And I I'm know. not going to say we have to stick with anything forever. Yeah. If we if we want to change it up, we we could come up with our own rating. And yeah, true. You know, I thought like maybe come up with like a seven point scale or something. Just throw the whole game off. It's Mine's <laughs> like a four point scale. Either it's a movie that I never want to see again, movie that I might watch again if it were on and there was nothing else to do. I forgot what the other one was. Well, I know top, what you're saying. Though. I know the top one's like it's on Batman, all the Batman movies. I'm in anytime it's on, I'm mm -hmm. watching it. Yeah, no matter Step what. Step below that is like it was good. I'm glad I watched it. But I probably won't watch it again. It, it so is that's true. Like, that's, that's how I think about that's it. All especially I when you talk about superhero movies. I mean, especially that genre. But any movie. If you're going to... A good movie to me is also, <clears throat> am I going to rewatch this? This is going to be something I'm going to put on again. Yeah. And if I watch it a second time and I find myself struggling to get through it. All right. Let's put some thought into that. And maybe we come up with our own scale. But for the sake of just rating today. You just saw the movies fresh. If you could just rate the whole... All four movies. One rating. Of your fresh take. 10 point scale. 10 point O scale. 8 point 1. It's pretty good. Wait, entertaining. It was see, entertaining. I've, I've only seen the first two, so. I just try to I'm picture gonna... every person's reaction like a Hunger Games fan going like, that's bullshit. And <laughs> some guy like me going like, that's a fair rating. Yeah, I mean. Because that's was, what I think. I think it's a fair rating. I think, it, I think it was entertaining. 
I got some points for it too on the back end, but it was entertaining. I mean, it was on her list to watch. Yeah. yeah. I mean, she read all the books and the reason the prequel novel came out and she read that. So that's kind of why she's like, Oh, have you ever saw all of them? And I was like, no bad answer by the way. <laughs> but, but, uh, well, how'd you say it? You should have been like, no, I've been meaning to for years. Yeah. But then we went through the, the wormhole of how do we watch them? Cause now I can't go to blockbuster so literally, we check Netflix not on there, HBO not on there, Hulu not on there. Uh, Dude, do you have like an Apple TV or something? But we have that's a- we have AT and T. He's got to say to the remote, "Yeah, show me that." And we did Hunger Games, and it was on one of those on-demand channels that I didn't even know we had. So we watched it there. I had to watch some commercials, oh, nice. like a wow. bunch of pools. You had some commercials, yeah. Wow, it was on-demand TV, <laughs> it's like old school TNT. But what? It's a good check your phone. All right. Well, I, I I like those movies, but I uh, I agree. I was I loved the first two, and then. The last two, I was like, I just kind of felt, I was like, okay, it's over. Yeah. Should I finish and watch the last two or just, just leave it? I mean, if I think if you're going to do it, you should probably honestly do it like Mike and Rachel just did and watch them like straight through. I think that's how I'd have to do it. I couldn't yeah. just like pick up okay. on any of the movies. I'd be like, what happened again? We did yeah. like, we did like one a night every other night or something. It wasn't like, hey, strap in <laughs> you're up nine to... hours. Oh no, games. it's 4 a.m. We have to work tomorrow and I just watched... Four Hunger Games. We've watched them. Um, Carrie and I are on, have just finished the fourth out of the fifth Breaking Dawn movies. Oh, Twilight. Uh, Twilight. Movies. There you go. Can't wait to talk. We're, we do plan. I've been plugging that forever. I'm sure people are tired of hearing about it, so I'm not going to plug anymore. But I, I do promise we will talk about <laughs> it. Um, all right. Well, then, um, me last year, I'm just going to plug one show. We're watching Raised by Wolves on HBO. There's one I've season it. of it. Um, I have it just pulled came up out, right? in the web browser here. Um, yeah, it's just, it's a new show. There's only one season out and the, uh, premise is basically futuristic, uh, humans, um, in the middle of like a great civil war seeking out life and on other planets, technology is like really advanced. This is like probably like year 2200 or something. And they've now have androids enlisted to help with humans with everything. But there's a lot of politics of this war, people that are out there and the premise is like setting up that. Um, like the human race is trying to start again and they've got these two androids programmed to be basically good parents. Um, but in the middle of all this, there's this giant war going on. You don't know where the, the androids really stand. Um, there's individuals like playing both sides, like undercover, kind of that espionage type vibe, but in a futuristic like planetary state, like very desolate feeling. The costumes are great. The acting's great. Um, and we're like 70% through, I think that we have like, I don't know, one or two episodes to go. We're at the, we're toward the end, but, uh, definitely wanted to highlight it now. And there'll probably be more content for, on this show, um, from most of the superheroes in the future. Cinemax, you said that... HBO, HBO. Okay. I saw the max. I wasn't sure. Yeah. HBO max. I can talk about my show as well. I forgot. I was kidding when I said I forgot. I know. Well, go ahead. That was all. uh, That was my spiel on Raised by Wolves. I would say definitely check it out. Ridley Scott directed the first two episodes of that show. That is right. And Ridley Scott is, of course, from Alien. Alien. And Blade Runner. That sounds. You can and you have that vibe for sure. Like a good vibe. Alien for that mystery. Something's around every corner. Pretty good. Very cool. What was your show, Andy? Uh, Yeah, I watched. I finished first season one of. Ratchet on Netflix. Um, it was pretty good. I, I put, put it in that glad I watched <clears> it, <throat> won't watch it again category. Oh, really? But although, I mean, you don't really rewatch shows too often, maybe sometimes. Well, maybe not after, as, not after as a much couple of movies. No, maybe after a couple of years. Yeah, yeah, not, not as much as movies, but um, yeah, just about Sarah Paulson stars in it. And it's like a lot of um, a lot of the same people that are in like the American Horror Story shows that are on FX or FF, FXX, whatever that, whichever one of those it's on. And, mm-hmm. um, She's just a nurse in a psychiatric hospital, and it's super manipulative, super psycho. And she—it's basically like a, um, a prequel to One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Oh, nest, really? Which I, that, I've never that, seen. So that's I'm, really what it is. Yeah, I didn't know. Yeah, that. so this nurse, I guess, is in that movie. I'm kind of doing it like <clears throat> backwards, like we talked about. You should watch things in release order rather than mm-hmm. release order. But I kind of flubbed that here because I've never seen that movie, but. The, the well, show the show looked good. I was like, let's let's see what this is about, and if I like it, I'll watch the movie. And sure enough, now when you pull up Netflix after watching that show, that movie just pops up to the very top. So that'll be my next watch, and 
that's that's about it. Well, but. you should tell us how it goes because um, I, I yeah I agree. I think you should watch in release order, always verse like chronological. But you're gonna have a fresh take, like a fresh perspective on this now because you've watched the prequel before a movie you've ever seen. So that'd be interesting to hear you tell us about yeah, it. This lady's insane. It's crazy. Just leave it at that. Can't. Sarah Paulson, right? Yeah, from yeah. American Horror, Horror Story. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. She's a, she's a great actor. She's. Have you, have you seen that yet, Mike? Ratchet? No, but I've seen one flew over the cuckoo's nest, and it's it, she's the head nurse, nurse Ratchet. Okay. And that one flew over the cuckoo's yeah. nest. So it's I've probably seen one flew over the cuckoo's nest since I was five, and my dad was like, "This is this great movie," mm-hmm. and I don't remember anything about it. Right. So I would definitely need to. I think put it just it back got on. up. I think it just got put on Netflix a couple days ago. So good timing. Yeah. Well, this is exactly why. We added this section because uh, I like this. This is how because I mean we're always all watching something, and the show is called mostly oh, superheroes. The mostly is definitely like a key word because we're gonna bounce all over the place, and we might talk about comedy. I, you know what movie I really like? Airplane. Airplane's <laughs> awesome. I might just want, I would like to do maybe a live watch party where we just like get popcorn out and beers and I mean, just put it on the would TV. Would it even be much watching or would it just be laughing the whole That's, time? That's, it would be a recording of us three <laughs> laughing for two it. and a half hours or I whatever. I haven't seen that in forever. And you know what? Airplane 2. <laughs> 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 They're all good. Um, all right, cool. Well, thanks for uh, sharing what you're uh, watching this week and we'll, uh, we'll keep this series going and keep you up to date uh, with what we're watching. Why don't you let us know what you're watching? And you can let us know at so mostly superheroes.com or any of our social channels. Send us in a show that or a movie that you have been checking out. It's been interesting lately, and you'd like to get a conversation going about it and maybe even get shouted out on mostly superheroes. Slide the DMs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> However you want to write us. <laughs> Not my DMs. Not well, you said you already got some. <laughs> you said you've already got some spam. <laughs> and he's like, you basically ruined <laughs> my whole life. <laughs> I can't go to the grocery store anymore. No. <laughs> My lady's <laughs> not that bad yet. Um, all right. So I have some news and rumors. Um, and we're just going to go through it. Because I already picked out all this stuff. So if you guys have, as I always say, if this takes us somewhere else and you see something that you think of, don't hold back. The MCU news drought is over. Um, so like we finally got some news here this week. And I was just, if you've been listening, I've been complaining. I complained on episode 10. Comicbook.com. Uh, this is where I'm going to get, ni- this is where I got 90% of my news today. You'll be here, hearing me giving shout outs to them all day. Did release some updates on some major titles that we've been waiting to know about all year. First up, the notorious Black Widow, which has been moved, I don't know, four or five times. Last date we knew was November 20, was November 6, 2020. Now it's May 7, 2021. Shang-Chi, I don't know if I'm getting that right, Legend of the Ten Rings, was originally May 7, 2021. Now it's July, so just a few months there. Big delay here. Eternals was supposed to be right around the corner. I wasn't expecting it. I don't think anybody else was. We haven't even seen a teaser. Mm -hmm. Right. It's now February. It was February. Now it's November 5th. 2021. Jeez. That's sad. Big delay. It's sad, but I mean, again, I mean, I don't think, I wasn't expecting much other news on this. I think the biggest surprise there is the Black Widow. That's like delayed an entire year. And that's kind of scares me how much everything else is going to get delayed. either. Because that movie was done or almost done when COVID started. So. Yeah, I know. It's like, um, Like, it's definitely a statement, you know, from these big right. companies to say, okay, this movie was originally supposed to come out in May of this year. And now they pushed it a one full year back from its potential release date that they had already pushed back, what, five or six months. So now they're saying, we don't give a fuck. Like, we're going to push this back because... we got to make our money. We're going to make our money. And also, they, I mean, they've decided, I think, what stories are most important to tell. And they've probably been able to reevaluate... We're going to talk about WandaVision. So here's the rest of the schedule. There's they really they basically released updates on everything, but the big stuff we just mentioned: WandaVision, ten episodes, I'm guessing, but a uh, episode series, TV episode series, will be out in 21. Disney promises. Falcon Winter Soldier is getting pushed to 2021. 
WandaVision's 2020, right? Yes. So okay. WandaVision's going to come first. It's going to be the first thing out. And wasn't that like a <clears throat> video clip or something you did on one of your social medias where it's WandaVision like passing Winter Soldier running or something like that? <laughs> oh, yeah. That was, and that's, that was, again, comicbook.com. I think that one was Brandon Davis had put that together. Um, and I just shared it out. Yeah, it's exactly right. Just, it's like they're just switching up the schedule. Um, and then just to get to the really great news that happened this week. I mean, this is all say what you will about the schedule again. I wasn't like, I wasn't like, oh man, I'm so shocked. Everything's pushed back. At least they're not scrapping stuff. Oh man, yeah, you're right. You're totally right. I mean, like this show's canceled. That would be that'd be scary. We got a WandaVision trailer during the Emmys. Did you guys watch the Emmys? No, I never really do. No, I only watched it for like an hour. I couldn't watch the whole thing. I'll follow on Twitter and see who won and. It was cool. Like uh, my big hero of the Emmys was Shit's Creek. I love that show. Congrats, Shit's Creek, on all your like stuff. Like seven Emmys, right? Oh man, just they were up there the whole time. Hmm. During which <clears throat> I didn't know this was going to happen. Can you imagine me? How excited I was! I was just in bed <laughs> watching the Emmys, and the, and all of a sudden it said WandaVision trailer. I was like, I was with Carrie. I was like, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I would have been there for that. That's hilarious. <laughs> I was like, there's a, I've been asking for this for weeks. I was like, there's an MCU trailer on the TV right now. Um, and I took some notes. Um, you guys can see these. We won't share all of my notes with the audience. They don't need to just <laughs> so read all these. For but, me, yeah, sure. are you going to like explain this to me like I know what's going on or <laughs> I don't know? Because I watched the trailer and I was like, here's my goal when what I, in the world is happening? Here's my goal when I explain anything, especially when we talk about MCU stuff. I'm always going to look at it through the lens of kind of like all three of us. Like me and Andy know a lot. You are, you don't really know much at all. Mm-mm. So I want to like tell somebody about what's going on that won't be boring to a person that follows this stuff, but will inform someone like you on toe what's that happening. Line. Toe, toe that, that line. line. I'm going to try. Hashtag toe that line. Maybe we'll. Toe we'll that use. line. Oh, there's another sound bite. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So basically where we left off with these two. A uh, big spoiler alert right now, MCU. Big spoiler for Endgame, Avengers Endgame. If you are watching the MCU films, you're going to want to fast forward just 15 seconds or so once I say go, because um, this is a major spoiler. Here we go. End of Avengers Endgame. The Thanos um, loses. The Avengers do another snap and bring all the people that died back, including Wanda. Not including Vision. Because Vision got killed differently, and he's also like a machine. And he was living off of one of the Infinity Stones, called the Mind Stone. And Thanos, the way he killed him, he like ripped it out of his head and threw his body down. And he just didn't come back whenever they did this massive snap. Really, I don't, I don't know why he didn't, I guess. Because he wasn't, oh, I know the rule. I, I do know why. You can only be brought back by that snap if you were killed by the snap. And he wasn't. He was murdered by, by his hand. Yeah, that's why it was. Uh, who were they trying to bring back? Um, Black Widow, too. Yeah, yeah. I was like, I couldn't think of it. So this show is like, it's about these two. And obviously, he is dead. So it's, you know, right off the bat, you're like, what is this? Is that a flashback? Something else to keep in mind, there was two years in between Infinity War or Captain America, Civil War, and Infinity War. So, like, they were, like, living together, apparently, for, like, that whole time. So, I thought maybe the show was going to be about that. Well, now, after this trailer, there's a few things. First of all, it looks like this is a reality that's been created, most likely, by Wanda in an attempt to, like, create a life for her and Vision not to die. So, it might be be taking place in, like, within a moment before his death in Infinity War. Or... She's created a whole entire reality together because the Scarlet Witch, we don't really know the extent of her powers. We do know that she has like some cosmic slash like very witchy, like she has like mind control. And she's going to be in Doctor Strange's Multiverse of Madness, which is going to be about jumping across planes of existence. So it looks like maybe this is a a, uh, setup of something that's either going to be contained within just like the mind of Wanda or it could, in fact, be like this major reality created within the MCU that we'll get to know and play around with for years to come. 
but it's it's hard to tell. And I kudos to Brandon Davis, BD on Instagram. Um, got his Instagram up on the screen right now. He did a great video from comicbook.com. He's a one of their guys over there. And I got all that from him. He did a great job breaking it down. If anybody wants to check that out, it's like a five minute video. Andy, did you see this or have you been following this? Yeah, much? for sure. I watched it. I'm I had no idea really what was happening. Because I this video that Brandon Davis made obviously shed some light on it probably, but I was just like, okay, this is, looks interesting. Can't wait for it to come out. Please don't be uh like December thirty first, please. Like just get that to us ASAP. Like That's true. This is a show that they could and I feel like they might just drop it on a random day and just be like, hey, it's out. Episode one here. I can't wait to like, talk about this I show. I could see that happening. Like, they need they need attention and buzz. Like, what's a better way to start buzz than just dropping the episode like, on a random day? I agree. I also know <laughs> that, like, they switched up the order of Winter Soldier, you know, Falcon Winter Soldier. So, like, obviously this is, I feel like this might be a story they were like, okay, we can run with this maybe in a different direction and we're just not quite ready for the other stuff yet because you think of they kind of looked at it like this won't affect our storytelling if this drops first that has to be the conversation happening at marvel studios because that's how they handle everything like mm-hmm. the story has to be told correctly um some cool things about this trailer just some easter eggs that were pointed out uh one we see monica rambeau in this she is the kid in the captain marvel movie Remember the kid that was like the daughter of Captain Marvel's uh, pilot friend? Yep. And she, I think they called her like Little Trouble or something. She, she's in this, but like as an adult. So obviously like she was a kid in the 90s, but now she's going to be like an adult okay. character. And it looks like maybe she was sent into this reality to like see what was going on, to help Wanda maybe. And the theory is she's working for the new S.H.I.E.L.D., which apparently is in the comics like called S.W.O.R.D., S-W-O-R-D. And, like, this is going to be the new establishment or something we're going to be dealing with. And that Nick Fury potentially sent her in to, like, go help Wanda out of this reality. And you know who Nick Fury is. I do. Yeah. Samuel L. Jackson. Eye patch. Captain Marvel. He was in that, too. Oh, yeah. Um, And then, lastly, we did see, potentially, this is more of a rumor. It was kind of a weird photo. Darcy Lewis was maybe seen on set. She's from the Thor movies. And so there's some theories about how they're going to connect Thor to this story. And Eric Selvig, Dr. Eric Selvig, who if you remember last time in Dar- Thor The Dark World, Dr. Selvig was like running around crazy, talking about multiversal yeah. dimensions and stuff. Yeah. And now all of a sudden it's like, that's what exactly what we're dealing with. This character might, I've always loved that character, so he might be able to come back in a big way. Kudos again to Brandon Davis. Like you can't, I can't take credit yeah, for him. Yeah, I'm going to watch this. this. He's the guy that caught me up on all this. This show's definitely intriguing. Like, I don't know. I have no idea where it's going to go, nor nor does anyone probably. And no, it's so hard to tell because we just don't know anything about their plans of the movie titles and stuff. Right. It's like, this is a dead guy. And I and, wonder if it's like her coping with the situation that he's not there anymore and she has like an alternate reality if she's that powerful, like she can create an alternate reality. Is it something like that, you think? It could be something like that and like she's got to deal with his death, but... There could be... And they're going in to save her to be like... You got to get out of this. Yeah. But she's so powerful, the theory is she might be able to make this reality an actual reality. And then maybe when they... There's a part where it goes from... Even the theme here, you can see they go from like this digital colorful to black and white, like to color. And there's like the the theory in this video again was that maybe as they're changing from black and white back to color, that's them becoming real or switching realities and like it's all that mind melting stuff like and which is like my favorite stuff because i want to figure it out it's that pleasantville isn't that the film like pleasantville toby mcguire yeah pleasantville where they change and like they have color they don't have color and then they start to have color and they start after they start having like sex yeah and like feelings and they're actually it was yeah it wasn't about the sex it was something deeper (laughs) that's a good film we should maybe get that one out again yeah you know the VHS. Yeah, but yes, very much that Pleasantville. Yeah. Yes. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, I don't have that one. You know what I really want to happen here? Hmm. An Olsen twins cameo. <laughs> <laughs> Who do you think? You think they're mutants? I I, have, I don't care what what they are, but the like yeah, obviously this, they are. this just looks like it like is happening in that time period. Just like, hey, Vision, we're gonna babysit and just like 
and it looks like in their reality Full they house. are doing like TV show s things. Yeah. Like they're in a stu- they're like in a rom com type living room. So maybe we do get like a full house. What if they jump in it for your ten episodes? I think it'd be very possible. What cool. the hell are those girls doing? What's the song? Again, they're billionaires. They don't have to do much. I mean, you can borrow for a day. Like, this sis. Hey, probably, sis. This Olsen's probably more famous than them now, but she's definitely. she's so great. She's so talented. This yeah. Elizabeth Olsen. I never thought that. Like I was, I loved the Olsen twins growing up. That was like yeah. one of my first. I don't know. Oh, crush it. Oh, for sure. Perhaps, yeah. Perhaps. Ashley, for sure. Ashley was my Mary Kay. Yeah. I guess not Ashley. really. I don't even know. They're like, you guys like know which is which. Are you guys that big of fans? No. <laughs> Maybe. Mike's <laughs> deployed them out in a crowd. <laughs> the, oh, they're, oh, they're worth $500 million. I was wrong. But still. A piece? Mary Kate and Ashley. A piece. I mean, that would be $250 million. I could do the math. I was just curious. <laughs> yeah. They're, it's It should definitely be equal. Like, there's no way that they're one fat. should be more valuable than the other. They're. They're just the same. Their fashion empire was worth a billion dollars. Yeah, I remember that's that's their whole thing, right? That's that's why they have all their money. Yeah. All right, so wrapping up uh, this, this is huge news. I mean, this was a great. It was great, first of all, to get an actual trailer for something, not just uh, like what they did for DC Fandom for Shazam when they just they're like, hey, draw a picture. <laughs> yeah, and, this, and you helped me kind of figure out what in the world was going on because I watched it and I was like, I have no idea what's going on. Well, again, like that's and that's. If there's if there are any goals from this show, it's definitely to like help. I mean, I'm not trying to like enlist a Marvel army by any means, but I mean, I definitely think these shows are worth watching. And if you're somebody like you, Mike, that hasn't like that loves superhero stuff your whole life, and you're like, oh, I've been meaning to do that, I would love for this podcast to help you yeah. get involved with it. Um. All right. Okay, we're back. Uh, sorry, I had a, just noticed the camera was unplugged. We can't can't be having that. So, uh, Mike, you were just saying. Yeah, I just got a text. Over the wire, I just got a text. Um, rumor mill, the boys' spinoff is in the works at Amazon. The R-rated series will take place at Vought's Soup College. The young adults explore their physical, moral, and sexual boundaries, described as part college show, part Hunger Games. Full circle here. From fandom. I'm in. <laughs> I can't get enough of this content. I mean, you just, where are you, Mike? You just said you started episode one. Episode uh, of season two, though. Oh, of season two. Yeah. Where are you? Andy? I, I've seen season one. I haven't, I haven't watched any of season two yet. <laughs> well, no, that, we're not going to dive into it, but man, it is a good show. Every single episode of season two has been great. That sounds so cool. I love it because this, I do wonder about this show, about how, like, how, well, like, they can keep it going. Well, it's a smart show and it's got like some really like really interesting parallels between what's happening in the real world with like major corporations and shining a light on like how media works and how government works. And I'm glad, I'm glad the story is finally being told, but it's very, unless you like realize it, it's just almost, you might not notice it. It could pass you by and you'd be like, this is a cool superhero show. I think it, sounds good to bring it more down to real life about individuals living in this world, maybe aspiring to be, because that's more relatable for people like us that are living, the masses that are living in the real world. I don't work at the top CEO 80th floor of Vought Industries with a guy named Homelander. You know, that's a very, that's the 1%. And like, this is a slap in the face to a lot of those people. It's a real, that's why I love this show. Like they're like saying, fuck you to a lot of the people that are out there. But I like the idea of like starting a little bit more with ground roots, it sounds like. Hell yeah. The only thing, I know we have one person that still watches Walking Dead in this room. <laughs> I don't want it to be, turn into the next Walking Dead because it is a comic book series. It's a graphic novel series, right? And I don't want it to be so like, we're doing this again? Oh, again? Eighth season. Oh, again? Oh, here's a spinoff. I just don't want him. I don't know. I want him to keep it. This is fresh to me and new. But so was The Walking Dead. So you're so right. A little yeah. cautionary tale for well, me. Well, and even to quote myself, I remember this now. I even said, "Walking Dead, make one good thing. Don't make a bunch of bad stuff." So you're right, Mike. You just like turned the tables on me a little bit. Now it's like you know maybe you should just focus on one thing. Just keep this show going for 15 seasons. Be the first show to like give us. Who's gonna give us the next like? 
What was it like the how long how many seasons were the pra- Sopranos? Ten? Nine? I, think seven. I don't know. But like, who's gonna be the who's gonna be the next like, Game of Thrones? Like you know, oh, eight wow. like eight or nine, ten strong seasons of TV. Sopranos was six and they split the sixth season up by like a year and a half or something like that. Like there's so much content out now, but like only like very there's only so many things that like really change you and like get a movement going like Game of Thrones. But the boys I feel like is got a following. A following. But I also live in that world, so maybe maybe I'm too I, close I to know. it to see like do a lot of people know about the boys? I know a lot of people didn't know about season one. Game of Thrones probably was not huge right off the bat either. It's it probably kind of organically grew to where it was at. I didn't watch it so, when it was first out. Like, yeah, I probably got into like season three or four maybe. Yeah. Uh, Same. So T B D could be the boys, but I don't know what else would what else it would be to be honest. Hmm. I think people got to give it a shot. Yeah. Like I've told a couple people and they were like, all right, I'll try it. And they're, they watch the first season in a weekend mm-hmm. because they get into it. Like it's hard to explain kind of what it is, but once they get into it, people are going to like it. And I don't know. I have hopes for the spinoff if it happens. Yeah. That's interesting. I definitely want to read about that. Um, yeah. th- thanks for the breaking news. Tell Jake we said thanks. Do you think they're going to do like a, like how they do on, DC TV shows and like, oh, crossover, gotta watch it for the crossover to know what's going on. I mean, if they do, I'll be like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm here. Be- speaking of which, this is a good segue. Well, no, it's that was early. Was wrapping up MCU. <laughs> Whereas, this is Rumorville now. This is something that like kind of I feel like started with a meme many years ago <laughs> where it said like, if 90s actors played Marvel... Oh, and it like replaced uh, Robert Downey Jr. with Tom Cruise. It replaced Chris Evans with Brad Pitt or something. Well, now they're talking about this is a rumor came out of Marvel Cinematic Universe Philippines. Legit on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> There's so many layers to what you just said. <laughs> you kept going. I thought you were done. <laughs> Dude, if I find a rumor, I'll just be like, I mean, I don't want to spread rumors, but I'll be like, I'll tell you who said it. <laughs> Marvel said it. It was this guy. It says there's a rumor that Doctor Strange two will have a multiple alternate realities, and Tom Cruise was being looked at playing Tony Stark to be one of the alternate realities Iron Man in a cameo. So like you're bouncing around Earths, you meet another like team of Avengers. But do you think they're gonna like do that? It seems kind of DC, uh, like they're doing that in the Flash kind of thing. It does seem a little on the nose, yeah. like big money grab. That's that was funny. That's it's not, not even worth talking about too much. It was literally, I just thought it was more funny. Than just <laughs> Tom Cruise and Iron Man should not be in the same sentence. Who, uh, who, where's that from, Logan? Marvel Cinematic Universe Philippines. Via Facebook. <laughs> it's a Facebook group or page. <laughs> no official mark or anything. Via Facebook on the dark web. <laughs> but he had, did you add the picture or did he at the bottom? That's their picture. Wow. Okay. A little more legit. Is that my phone? It's Election season. Spam calls out. Oh, man. They're having a lot of spam calls. (laughs) That's why you don't register to vote. All right, over to D.C. Just kidding. I registered this year. Yeah, everybody. Hey, everybody get out there and vote. Seriously. I have to get a new license to vote. Yeah, not to go there. We're not going to. We won't get get into it. I really believe that every person should vote. So go vote. Agreed. Every person. If you think I'm singling you out, I am. Every person. (laughs) Go vote. All right, DC. We talked about James Gunn's Suicide Squad on, what, episode seven? Something like yeah. that when you guys were here. And we met this character called Peacemaker, played by John, John Cena. Cena. Yeah, that was, that's a song, right? Yeah. The champ is here. Somebody posted, I mean, immediately. There was like, here's the, the what, there's like, whenever there's six of them, they call themselves something. Um, anyway, it says like, here's the six, blah, blah, blah. And somebody goes, I only see five. <laughs> <laughs> I love those. I, those, uh, that, those never get old. Never get old. The it, best it really were comments doesn't. on there that were like, what are you talking about? And I was like, that would have been me like probably a year ago. <laughs> I was like, what do they mean? Yeah. Oh, we're not going to let these go over your head. Don't worry. We won't. That's exactly right. We'll always explain ourselves. Here we are again, sneaking wrestling <laughs> comment commentary into a well, superheroes it's, podcast. It's not too hard whenever you got names like John Cena. On yeah. a DC movie. Yeah. And, and the you Rock. Got, and The Rock. And then this is going to be a show, correct? Like a series. Yeah. HBO original. Series. So this is a series that's going to come from HBO Max. 
HBO Max, man. I've been saying it. I've been saying it for months. They're doubling down on DC. And at not two months after we've got this trailer on Suicide Squad, they announce a show because apparently they've sold this character. That's awesome. I love it. I was going to read, um, and oh, it's going to be a prequel to the movie. So it'll be like character development origin story. So do we know a lot about what type of character he is? Well, I'm glad you asked, Andy. <laughs> is that what you're doing right now? It's perfect. Thank you. Thank yep, you. Yep. I, uh, I, I did a little bit deeper homework this time because I want to make sure I wanted to be somewhat informed of what we're talking about. And just for those listening, like we don't know what Logan's going to do. He just kind of goes <laughs> off on these tangents. So Andy had no idea he was going to get a little bit of a background here. So <laughs> that's natural. That I, was a natural. I very question. much appreciate it. And that, that's the organic way this show goes. You know, you just just let it go. Very much Jesus take the wheel in this studio. <laughs> Okay, here's the full press release. Comicbook.com. Thanks again. The show is basically brought to you by Comicbook.com, but not in official capacity whatsoever. <laughs> but, if you're... but if you're at Comicbook.com and you're listening to this, I love your guys' stuff, and I'm usually on your website preparing for these episodes. Let's have a conversation. Okay, here's the press release. Um, I'm trying to see like who it's from. Oh, it, it's from HBO, I think. Oh, fuck. It's Peacemaker. <laughs> HBO Max is set to explore the origins of the Peacemaker character, the master of weapons from the highly anticipated upcoming The Suicide Squad film, and the new Max original action adventure comedy series, Peacemaker. HBO is given a straight-to-series order of eight episodes for the first season of the show. John Cena will reprise his role from The Suicide Squad movie to star in the series, and the film's acclaimed writer-director, James Gunn, will write all eight episodes of Peacemaker and will direct multiple episodes including the first gun and the suicide squad producer, Peter Safran <laughs> Safran will serve as executive producers of the series with Cena as co-executive producer based on the character from DC peacemaker will be produced by guns, troll court entertainment, blah, blah, blah. An association with Warner brothers should be beginning production in early 2021 prior to gun beginning work on the next Guardians of the Galaxy film. Wow. Well, fun, to, just, fun, to have fun sentences to say. Yeah. That's just scary how far away that that Guardians movie is then. But well, yeah, that so is. Anyways. Well, here's, here's to your question, Andy. While the details about Peacemaker are being kept under wraps, the series will explore the origins of the character that Cena will play in the upcoming film, a man who believes in peace at any cost, no matter how many people he has to kill to get it. It's very Homelander-ish. The series will extend the world that Gunn is creating for the Suicide Squad movie, which is scheduled to be released in theaters by Warner Brothers Pictures August 6, 2021. So the series is meant to come out before the movie? Or is it a prequel following the film? When's this coming out? Production isn't starting until early 2021, and then the movie is, is August 6, 2021. Okay. So it'll come out after. It'll be after. It'll yeah, be yeah. a prequel. I think origin it's, story. So yeah. we'll meet we'll meet him first one and of, we'll, one yeah. of my friends speculated they're like, "Oh, that means he's probably going to die early in the movie." And I was like, "I hope not, but you never know." Especially like, there's so well, many if there's a series. There's so many like characters in the Suicide Squad that yeah, of course somebody's going to die early, but yeah, they all got they all they all have the uh chips in their brain. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if it'll be him though. If they're going to put a series behind him. Like, I know they can keep doing origin stories and stuff like that. Depends on how early they start. Yeah. <laughs> start I know. when he's a baby. Just yeah. as me, I'm like, oh, I already know what happens to him. Like, Yeah. 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 I, I, it definitely takes a, a, yeah. a, a bit away. I don't know if you agree, Mike, though, but this this saddens me in, in, a, in a small way because you know that he will not be on be wrestling anytime soon. No, he'll just be – he's going to be the Rock 2.0. And just show up on big stuff. And oh, it's been already been over a year since he's been yeah. on WWE TV. Maybe he can it's be better. like The Rock and All in the Family and just be in that movie poster, <laughs> even though you you guys told me he's only in the movie for five minutes. <laughs> I mean, John I, John Cena was done wrestling when he grew out his hair. So yeah, it, it is weird. <laughs> it it's is definitely weird. weird, but it's it, they're, they're, it's a better place with him around, even if it's just like The Undertaker, like once per year. Like he's not even doing that right now. Well, have you guys watched Watchmen? Yes. Yes. The series. Yes. And then they have a Warshack yes. show coming out. They also have Doom yeah. Patrol. They also have the Justice League Snyder Cut coming out. 
They have the Suicide Squad, and now they have this show. Disney and HBO are doings, or not Disney, but my DC pants just got a little bit tighter. I bet they have, <laughs> dude. I've been I've been saying it. I've been so excited, and now we're getting titles dropping. Yeah, Watchmen won a bunch of bunch of Emmys too. I think it did. It did win some awards. Kudos to you guys. There's a lot of good stuff on there. Well, anyway, we'll keep an eye out for it. It's a ways away, but it was. I was glad to get the news. Mm-hmm. Staying on DC, but kind of switching it up here on the CW. I don't know if you guys had, uh, if you had heard, Andy, we just talked about this on episode 10, the show. Supergirl season six will be the last season of Supergirl, which is very interesting. I did read some about this one as well, Andy. So I have some background info. Did you read anything on this one? You, you... <coughs> Excuse me. No. <laughs> no. We said this, Andy. I, I, you, you didn't. You don't really watch it. I barely watched it. But either way, um, the CW doesn't really cancel shows, so definitely interesting. Um, however, it was said that this might be happening ever since they made the plan for the Superman and Lois show that we did. Yeah. We talked about. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, I don't know. If, it's I'm be- sure she'll just appear in that occasionally. I think so. I think it's going to be almost role reversed and. I'm not saying that, I'm not saying it's completely true. These are like theories, but it was like they had to pull from Superman's story so often. I think it yeah. still stood on its own two feet. I Don't think I think I think now. it did just fine. I watched it for five seasons so far, so I think it's been pretty good. Um, but that it's coming sense. to a close. Maybe they have an idea in mind of how to end it, and they don't want to water down your the Superman story that's coming out with. All this. Huh? Maybe they have a yeah. vision. Yeah, and maybe, you know what would be really cool is if, I think, I mean, I just don't, I don't know what Melissa Benoist even wants to do. She used to play Supergirl. She might not even want to do this, but um, it'd be cool if they could just make her a standing character on the show. Yeah, I agree. Like, That'd just be... have two super people. Like, I mean, we had on Smallville for a while, and we had, they, like, Carl Kent was in, like, two seasons, I think, and it was fun. <laughs> it's like a crossover full-time. Yeah, I'm like, why not? Like, it's like you got an aunt and uncle situation, just and then you could just bounce between the two stories, and they always inevitably collide with a villain. It's like sitcoms. Like, if you watch Friends or How I Met Your Mother or Seinfeld or any of those sitcoms, there's main characters. In the 24 minutes that you're watching, there's two or three storylines going on. They all tie up nice and neat, and at the end, they're all, like, talking about it at a diner or a coffee shop. Yeah, I've seen This Is Us. Yeah, so... It's like all the different storylines converge. Yeah. I mean, that's what every sitcom does. Why can't they do this with this? Hey, here's our two cents. Bring it in. I don't know if maybe you're, like Mike said, maybe you've already thought of that and you don't want to ruin the surprise of what happens in season six. But I think it'd be cool. Yeah. I, yeah, I just wonder what this means for, like, the future of the CW shows. Like, are they still going to have crossovers, in like, every year? That was, like, a big part. And Arrow well, was that... always, like, the driving force behind it. Who knows? I, I mean, I I hope they do. I I tune in and watch those shows, even even for the ones like Legends that I kind of stop Legends of Tomorrow that I stop watching. Um, I mean, it's those are those are the best parts, and it's you know very, very well done. But we'll see. Yeah, we will see. And I uh, I'm I'm with you. It is scary because like you don't want to hear about CW shows just getting dropped off. Yeah. Um, I do know that they're was probably more to it than we realized just some things to keep in mind. This was the, this and Batwoman was the only CW show on, um, on Saturday nights and they didn't even start having a show on Saturday night until last year or two years ago. Saturday night. I mean, that's, that's a hard time slot. That's a hard time slot. And not only that, but Batwoman, the news we talked about last time on the show, but, uh, the actress that plays Kate Kane, um, Ruby Rose she walked away from the show. Yeah, so, a lot. so there's just a lot like up in the air. Yeah. So we're here for you, CW, though. If you need a little rally cry, we're here for it. You know, keep it going if you can. Then this just came out that uh, Umbrella Academy, which has two seasons out on Netflix, is going to start production on season three, reportedly next month. This was four days ago. Today is September 24th. And this was from We Got This Covered. I know you watched it. Mm-hmm. Good show. I watched season one. I have not watched season two. Well, when you do, we've got a whole episode on season one and two. Yeah. They've thrown a lot. I mean, 
You're throwing a lot of shows. <laughs> well, if you're going to be on this podcast, yeah. I'm going to tell you about all of them. Yeah. But you're, you're need, right. Need to quit your job. Just for a drink bit. coffee, monster, <laughs> Mountain Dew in my veins. You just don't. Rock. You don't sleep. Yeah, that's, that's that's what I've been doing wrong. And you got to get you got to get AirPods for uh, whenever you're watching at night, so you can just airplay from your Apple TV. <laughs> 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 no, we don't. We, no, we usually will watch it together. But uh, no, you don't have to watch all this stuff. But Andy and I have watched this. Umbrella Academy is kind of a wild show. All right, we did this earlier. Give it a grade. I would give season one a hard 6.8 because I did enjoy it, but it had a lot of downfalls. It was really drug out. The story took forever. Season two, give it a full 8.8. Oh, whoa, that's a big jump. Big improvement. Big improvement in my mind, and also with that finale, I am ready for season three. I don't care what it is. It's almost like Doom Patrol. How wild can this story yeah. get, and let me see it. That's why I originally <laughs> Doom started Patrol's so wild. watching Doom Patrol, because we finished Umbrella Academy, and you were like, oh, this Doom Patrol is kind of similar. I, it, it definitely... There's some parallels there. And yeah, it's like broken people with an old man for a dad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, and I, I, I'd, I'd put both seasons in my uh, glad I watched it, but but wouldn't rewatch uh, category. I, I need to. I did watch season one twice because I wanted Carrie to see system. it, and I told her <laughs> when we went in to watch it. I said, just so you know, basically, I gave her my rating, basically, yeah. without saying that. But um, but and she's like, okay, with that context, she was like, I thought it was pretty good. Because I didn't pump it up too much. That's the key. You can't pump up stuff that's not good. But season two, I think it pulled through. So anyway, exciting to hear about a show that's starting production and finding ways to work for us that are trying to watch shows. Always great. And the writer of Umbrella Academy is Gerald Way, right? Who's that? The lead singer of My Chemical Romance. Carrie's gonna be. She's gonna give you like a big hug after this because like I told her that I for I got that wrong. That like whenever I mentioned it, like I said, like story of the year. Yeah, <laughs> and, and I said I was ge- band. I said I was guessing, but I think it's Gerald Way. Like he wrote the comic book, right? Yeah, he wrote that's, the comic and that's book. A, that they, that's they, amazing. I mean, I mean, My Chemical Romance. They're still making stuff too. They got a new album out. I think. My Chemical a, Romance is supposed to go on tour. They were bringing it back, and then a lot of COVID talent. happened. <laughs> Thanks again, COVID. Awful. All right. Um, I think. Okay, this is the last bit, and then we'll uh, take a break. We're going to talk about our 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 featured film today. Um, this is a great point to leave off. This is by no accident. Little Star Wars news for you. Well, um, from comicbook.com. Surprise, surprise. Rogue One Disney Plus series gets a new Black Mirror director. This is the headline I got on September 22nd from Megan Peters over there. Thanks, Megan. I didn't even know there was going to be a Rogue One show. Rogue One. Great movie. It was a standalone movie, right? Like, yeah, so you could kind of take it out of the Star Wars, but it was I, I enjoyed it. It was the story of them getting the plans to yeah. take down the Death Star. Yeah, yeah. Episode three point five. Yeah, I right. love that movie. Yeah, I thought it was one of like the I, better. I, it's one of those movies that I had like a lot of fun watching. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Did you guys know about this series? I didn't know there was a show. No way. Like they're they're doing that with everything now. Well, let's let's do this. Let's let's play the fun game, right? Of like when this is all happening. So you have Mandalorian five years after Empire. You got Rogue One, just weeks before A New Hope. Mm-hmm. And then you have this Obi Wan show, also before A New Hope. I mean, it's got to be well before. Are they gonna are they gonna intermingle and like have oh. crossover episodes? <laughs> 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 yeah, I think we've seen those movies already. <laughs> Yeah, but still, like, we're going to get not the prequels. And we're going to get John Favreau involved going, no, 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 this is how you tell a story. Because he knows. I believe in him. I hope so. And I, I'm not saying he's even on this, because obviously Black Mirror is going to direct this one. Black Mirror director. I wish I had the name. I'm sorry, I don't. But the whoever directed Black Mirror. I've never seen. I've seen, like, a couple episodes of Black Mirror. That show is pretty crazy. Yeah, wild show. Um, very, I think it's good. I, I, I always watch the new seasons. I didn't really, but the, the bander, whatever that one was, where you're picking your own story. But either way, yeah, good show. Yeah, okay. I, know I, what you're talking I about. think it's one of those shows. Like I'm just a quick Google search. Like the Black Mirror does different directors for almost every one. Every episode, kind of like that. There's a creator. Um, 
series okay. created by Charlie Booker. Brooker. All right. Well, we're here for it. Um, I mean, we've seen what a show can look like in one of the like. If you if, if here's the thing, if we didn't have the Mandalorian, you would be like, "What? Well, I don't know. It might be cool." Yeah. Well, we know that it can be. Mm-hmm. And I love this movie. So if we're, you're telling me we're going to get some of these characters back, maybe. But Mike, also, if, you know, spoiler alert for Rogue One. A lot of the major characters, if not all of them, die. Because it's Rogue One. It's about the last battle to get these plans. So yeah. that's your spoiler alert. I, I said, I give you a full like three second beat. What's gonna? What's the show gonna be? Because it's kind of what you were saying earlier. Yeah, Are you gonna watch somebody live again? I think the Mandalorian's so good because it's kind of a mystery, and you're like, I'm and like, who is he really? Yeah. yeah, and he could potentially live forever through everything, and like the unknown is the best part. Yeah, this we, and like, oh, there's Ted. I know he's gonna die in three <laughs> months, anyways. Why am I even investing my time into this? Like I, I, I feel bad for him, like yeah. not being able to pay his bills, but like he'll be dead soon. <laughs> yeah, he, don't worry. Hey, go have fun. <laughs> like, don't worry about those bills. I'm like, I bet he regrets not going on that trip last weekend. Yeah, yeah, but at the same time, you know, Obi Wan dies in. Uh, so, I'll spoiler alert. Sorry, guys. Uh, he dies. What is that? Spoiler new alert. Hope, and then he, Obi Wan dies in A New Hope, but you still watch oh. the prequels. <laughs> that yes. is true. That is true. All right, prove us wrong. Just, and just also, we're here for it. Yeah. We're not bitching. Okay, great segue. And also, we're going to take a break. Don't worry, guys. But next up, after this break, we're going to do a deep dive on um, the movie that started it all, Star Wars A New Hope. I have some notes. Like, we all watched it, at least, right? Yep. Me and Andy did. I, I know what happens. All right. It's a movie you've seen plenty of times. Yeah. And this isn't even going to be, this might be like, it's, you know how it is. We, we want to pay, it's almost, it's almost about like paying tribute to these movies, but also rewatching them to put us back in the mindset to get ready for stuff like Mandalorian season two. Like that's the kind of stuff that I really like to do. I like to like go back, get myself in what I'm supposed to remember. And that's why we do this. Also, it's fun to talk about a film that maybe you saw when you were a kid. We'll rehash it. So right after this break, we're going to do Star Wars A New Hope. Don't go away. We'll be right back. We're back. Um, hey, if you're sticking with us, uh, hey, and we hope you're enjoying the show. You know, we're, uh, like I said, our, our fellowship's growing. Didn't want to brag about it too much, but yeah, I mean, we had a hundred followers. We have a hundred followers on Instagram. Thrilled about it. For sure. Um, so if you're listening, you're one of our everyday listeners, uh, we appreciate you. Um, love to give you a shout out. Uh, let us know what you're watching. If that hasn't been abundantly clear this episode, or like every episode at this point. At this point, it's again. almost like I'm like, hey, is anyone out there? <laughs> <laughs> say what what you watching. In that Hello? Voice, you're only going to. What you watching? There you go. <laughs> and we need suggestions, too. I mean, there's a lot of stuff I need to watch, but always take suggestions. Yeah. I was also. Some hidden gems and stuff. Yeah. Something that, like, maybe I was just telling Mike, I'll plug it right now. I, for the first time two years ago, watched The Dark Crystal. It's like a, it's kind of like a movie, like, never ending story, which is around here somewhere. It's just like a creepy, a lot of puppets, but like very deep show or movie. Then they end up making a 10 episode series on Netflix in the last few years. Hmm. Um, it's very strange, and like you'd have to. It's like a niche thing. I don't think they even got renewed for season two, but I highly recommend it. Um, and like that's just an off the wall thing. If you have an off the wall movie or show, let us know. So today, just because of this time, it was my turn to text you guys. I was scrolling around on TV, and I was just kind of in that that mindset of Mandalorian, you know. And I was like pumped up from talking about it with you guys in episode ten. So I get on Disney Plus. Of course, I just see the Star Wars category. Said I'm going to watch A New Hope. Hadn't watched it probably in about a year, probably with, or maybe a little less. Cause I watched it with Carrie, and I said, "Why don't we talk about that?" I think Andy, you watched it. Mike, you've seen it enough times. Yeah. And we're just going to pay a little tribute, talk about some of our favorite parts. Um, and real quick, this is a really good opportunity for me to plug to you guys. We have our first piece of exclusive content on mostly superheroes. And this piece of content is an audio recording. It's 17 minutes of me doing a live watch commentary on this movie, Star Wars A New Hope. 17 minutes, 3 seconds. And it's only available on Patreon. 
first piece of content that is a little bit shorter. It was something that I put together for us to talk about. Did you guys get I sent it to you guys. Yeah. Because I mean, I think you guys are on the show. I won't make you be patrons just yet. I appreciate that. <laughs> I felt like I should have paid you for it, but I'll leave a beer or two in the, fr- in the cooler here. Did you get to listen to it? Yeah, I did. Is it, well, I, I actually as a listened fan, to as it a, as a four I, before I watched the movie. So oh, wow. I was like kind of just paying a little more attention to those those parts because I could tell like exactly, oh, this part's coming up where Logan was talking about that. And yeah, I pretty much... Was it okay? Was it good? Yeah, like this, it's, it's a worth for people to go to Patreon and check it out. Yeah, I mean, no it's, doubt. A, it's like a it's a piece of content that you're not going to get like on our Spotify channel. It's something that you know you get a little piece of like a show that I do behind the scenes of like my process. And uh, I wish that I was I was actually supposed to write it down and I meant to have them ready for me. So Andy, maybe you can help me remember my notes because I already I only remember about half of them. But what we're gonna do today is really fun. I started to put together slides for the movie. So first up, I did make one course and we i figured we could set the stage a little bit so first of all let's let's just paint a picture so this is the brainchild of george lucas and it came out in 1977 the budget was 11 million (laughs) dollars and the movie is starring mark hamill as luke skywalker harrison ford as han solo as i come to find out that's how George Lucas says it. So he says "hand." Yep. Yeah, that's. So I'm switching. I'm down. Carrie Fisher, R.I.P. And kudos to you and your career, Princess Leia, of course. Can you guys see this original poster? All right. Yeah. yeah. The cool. It's like He Man. It reminds me of He Man. Yeah. I have the power. Wow. Yeah, that's. Even like the writing of Star Wars is like He Man. I didn't even. I mean, this came before He Man, though, so it's. But also, He-Man it was copy. a time where these stories were being yeah. told. But this is a, the brainchild of George Lucas. And not to like get ahead of ourselves, but just to kind of set it up a little bit as before we get to look, what we're gonna do is gonna be really fun. We're gonna actually look at photos. What Star Wars has on their website is what they call the movie gallery or something like that, plot okay. gallery or yeah. something. 42 images, not a lot, and it's the movie beginning to end, so with like a caption at the bottom of the photo, so we're going to do that. That's cool. That way we can just like do it, like we don't have to like rely on our brains, but it's just to set it up, he was talking about in the bonus features on Disney Plus, or if you own them, sorry, I have a new, uh, <laughs> I have a new rolly thing underneath this chair, it's like hardwood, and my shoes are squeaking on it. <laughs> It's playing basketball over here. It's like... <laughs> <laughs> uh, that scary movie when they do that. <laughs> hoop, dr- hoop dreams. Hoop dreams. Oh, yeah, well, just, yeah, we've, well, real quick, plug the contest. We are doing a contest on our social media pages. There's 30 of my VHS movies out there. I put a picture up. They're old school, just to give you a, a few. Jurassic Park. Sling Blade. Shawshank Redemption. The color purple, Footloose, Thelma and Louise, The Truth About Cats and Dogs, <laughs> <laughs> Romancing the Stone, As Good as It Gets, The Breakfast Club, and don't forget about On Golden Pond. We have some bangers in here. But How the Grinch Stole like Christmas. <laughs> How about Introduction to Canoeing? <laughs> I oh, needed man. that about 25 years ago. I want to see you do a live watch of that. So well, I'm going to vote for it. Guess what, Andy? That's the whole contest. You better go on there and vote. I think you already, I think I saw you on there. But um, no, I didn't vote yet, but I'm going to get out now. there and vote. Here's the rules There's. it's on our Facebook, our Instagram, and our Twitter. Any one of these, doesn't matter which one you mention, two movies out of the 30. There's a photo, so you don't have to remember all the things we just said. And you vote for the two you want. We're going to pick the best one. Best one's going to be a live watch with me. Most likely some people of the two. Maybe you guys, whoever can is available that day. I'm going to try to, I don't know exactly how I'm going to do it. I don't want to make any promises, but I'm thinking of trying to go live on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube at the same time. Ooh. And we're going to watch minimum one hour of the film, no matter which film. It could be Introduction to Canoeing if it gets the most <laughs> votes. It already has two votes out there. I've seen it. Why not? Not why. And then once you do your votes... You mentioned one friend that you want to like come and join with us. And lastly, you just got to like us on whatever channel you see it on. 
we're running this. I've done some promotion ads, so you might see this even if you don't follow us out there. But I hope that you search for us at Mostly Superheroes. And you can find this post, comment on it, cast your vote, give us a like, and you'll be entered to win $25 in food delivery. So we'll give you a gift card so you, on the day of the live watch, you can order in your favorite lunch or dinner or whatever time we're meeting up, and uh, we'll get you some grub. Sound good? Sounds awesome. Yeah, I want to win. Well, you can. That's It's a winner. It, the drawing is at random. All right. So that's the contest. Go check it out. Um, all our social channels. Um, back to Star Wars. So we we literally went off on a tangent there, but I was like, <laughs> I, I was like, I might, might as well just, just do it now. You now just put I just it keep in looking at these movies, and every time I look over, I see another one that I just giggle at. So <laughs> we get some blind true lies, here. sister act. And then there's just, <laughs> you missed all the best ones over here. Fantasia, the Disney stack. That's not in the. That's not in the contest. <laughs> yeah, that's a second contest. That's Those a different. Are... That's a different. I don't know. I got to do something special for Disney because I have most of them on VHS. Yeah. If Sister Act wins, you have to dress up like a nun and watch the film. My God, <laughs> it could be a Halloween Talking episode. About my God, Dude, that's a movie. That's a great movie. City Slickers. <laughs> you just change this whole podcast to Sister Act Appreciation. And watch them both. It might break them down. I changed the title to Mostly Sister Act. <laughs> <laughs> and just a sprinkling of other Whoopi Goldberg films. It's I'm like gonna this is what myself out. <laughs> this, again, this is what would happen in Sister Act Seven. <laughs> okay, so now that we've set up the stage, talked about the budget. I to this day, George Lucas was just like, "I'm going to make this thing," and he convinced all these people to make all this stuff, all these artists and everything. And again, the budget was only eleven million dollars, which was that a lot for the time? I mean, I figure that's like what. A hundred million in today's money. I don't know. I never know. No I never know the money conversions. Regardless, uh, eleven million dollars is about forty-seven million. So still a really low budget film, you would think. Um, yeah, and I'd really always wondered: Did they expect the uprising and fan base of that, and the phenomenon that is Star Wars, or was it just going to be like maybe his first movie? I, I don't know. What, have you guys ever thought about that? I don't think they probably expected what would happen. Yeah. 40 years later, people are still obsessed with it, and it's a whole universe, and there's spinoffs, and now Disney's taking control of it and just cashing that cow. Yeah, what a dumb question, really. Yeah. No, there's no way they foresaw any of this. <laughs> yeah. There's a whole theme park. Yeah. Galaxy's that's Edge. Like, that's how you know you made it. Like You have a theme park dedicated it to, is true. to your creation it's because yeah it's like once they make your thing on earth and you can go to it physically yeah <laughs> you've, you know you've made it all right well let's uh let's just go through the the movie if you guys are cool with that yep and uh got these nice images if i haven't uh said, i don't think i've said it this episode if you're listening we are also on youtube um hopefully by the time you're listening to this the youtube video is actually up and we do share our screen and and take you through some some images And we can kind of breeze through these and stop on the ones we want to talk about. Um, so this is the very beginning of the movie. First things first. I You guys ever seen Spaceballs? Mm -hmm. I love <laughs> how Spaceballs opens and just says, like, the joke that we were all thinking. Like, how fucking big can you make these ships? <laughs> yeah. Like, they're the biggest, longest ships you've ever seen. <laughs> and, like, the camera's like, it's it like. It just keeps going. It just keeps going. But and then Spaceballs, it, like, really keeps going. But then, <laughs> then you see, like. The Death Star, and you're like, oh, this ship is nothing compared to that thing. Yeah, they talk about how this film, they wanted to do things differently than the genres that were out in space at that time, which was very much like you're on a space station, and there's a hallway, and it's like, a, you know, you're very, uh, very siloed. They were like, we wanted there to be corridors of a massive spaceship, and I mean, that's how you feel. You feel like everybody's always like rounding corners, like, where could they possibly be? That's when they're bringing in uh, the ship with Princess Leia on it. We meet R2-D2 and C-3PO. Um, these two are so great. Just their banter back and forth throughout the entire saga. Um, just like uh, they're made after a couple comedians. I learned during like their bonus footage. It's like the two oh, people wow. that are known and were probably very well known at the time. Is Wait. one of them Danny DeVito? 
the CR two D two. I don't think it was like based on looks. <laughs> I know. Oh, okay. But it's like how like uh like the Muppets, those two Muppets that back like uh fight back oh, and yeah, forth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Costello, Stat- Statler, and Waldor, or whatever. Yeah, those guys. It's like that. that Laurel mean, and Hardy. Yeah, that's is that what? That's what's up. That's what the internet. And is. it's like everything they do is it plays off each other. Yes, and then you can't even hear R two D two, and it's just, it's such a great back and forth because it's always C three PO's reaction. So we meet them. Darth Vader. Um, I was. Not, this isn't like a pick apart this movie, but after you've seen it so many times, you just start noticing things. Like he's so short. <laughs> <laughs> and I always love this scene, like when he comes in and he just goes and looks at the floor and then walks off. I was like, "What's he doing?" <laughs> he's like. Yep, they're yep. all they're all dead. Yep, I did my job. <laughs> Later, <laughs> he's got he's like this. Later, Vader. <laughs> Iconic shot here. Leia giving the uh, message to R two D two. I always thought it was interesting how the Emperor. It's always the same, right? In every Star Wars, it's always. Like a military force that's like, okay, we'll follow the bad wizard. And like, you're always like, why? But it's just because they're bad guys. And like, that's who the Sith recruits. It's just like bad guys. I mean, there's a Makes thing. Sense. There's an ideology about Star Wars that you can like look up and all that. But there's a balance to the force. If there's this many good guys, there's that many bad guys. And it's always going to be balanced. Mm -hmm. I think people have like really looked into that. Like, Oh, good might overcome here, but then there's going to be bad over here. And that's up to whole forces. So if there's all these people helping the rebels, there's going to be all those people helping the empire. That's a, that's a really, that's well said. Because that's really is true. It's like, otherwise it'd be a boring story, but it is. It's like, no matter what you do, there's balance and like all things. Like the good comes with the bad. That's that's a good lesson to learn for life. Like, absolutely. Um, They get out, they go to Tatooine. They're wandering through the desert. R2-D2's got to get this message to Obi-Wan Kenobi. And as Leia says, it's, it's their last hope. Like Only the, hope. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I think it's Obi-Wan Kenobi. Your only hope. <laughs> I just get the whole title. I'm like, isn't this called Star Wars? The Last Hope? <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Then they get taken by the Sand Thieves. And luckily, as the Force would have it, oh. Luke's uncle's yeah. like, I'm going to buy these things. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> and not only that, I'm not gonna pick the. I'm not gonna pick both of them first. I'm. I'm just gonna pick one, but that red one that he picks breaks. Thank goodness. Otherwise, <laughs> totally different movie. Yeah, yeah. I know that they said there's like a lot of footage that we don't get of Luke foot like Luke Skywalker that they had from like the original movie. You guys ever seen the extra footage? No. no. It's like him like doing a lot of the stuff that like moping around the sand. He's actually like building. He's like oh, okay. racing. He's being a pilot. Hangs out. There's like a scene with him and his friend oh, okay. hanging out, but it, instead we didn't get any of that context. Yeah, and just kind of he's just bitching. Quickly. He's just bitching. Yeah, the whole time it's like well, I don't want to put together drawings. <laughs> <laughs> what else you got to do? Like he you goes, live in the desert. He goes, I want to go pick up batteries with my buddy Danny. Or <laughs> and his uncle's like, you got to stop wasting your time on all these foolish dreams. And he's like, when do I? When can I go to college? <laughs> In his modern Star Wars, <laughs> it was so it was so funny. Like I really felt for him. This is right after he's told his uncle's like, "You're not gonna go to college yet. You got to wait another year." I'm gonna look at these three moons set. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're sons. Are they sons? I think they're two sons. I'm pretty sure. And really, what's happening is his parents are fully aware of who Anakin Skywalker is, and that his uncle. Like, he lets you know that, like, he's like, I don't want him to go out there because he might go out and be a killer like his dad was. Yeah. Uh, we know what his dad did. Remember what his dad did? Yeah. She goes, his wife goes, honey, you got to let him leave sometime. And he's like, <laughs> what if he, what if he kills kids, a bunch of kids? How many kids do you want to die? <laughs> do you know how many kids his dad killed? Yeah. He's still killing kids. <laughs> He's at large. He has a thing called a Death Star. 
It's not even a moon. It's a star. <laughs> the man killed how many kids at once? Just blew up a planet. <laughs> Oh, man. That we this, know of. This uncle is terrified. Now that I'm thinking about it, Darth Vader is at large. <laughs> <laughs> he, he's grown. He's, <laughs> he's got a whole army. He's not just had one lightsaber in a daycare. <laughs> I just realized. We're all like, that uncle's so mean. But really, he's like, you guys don't remember. You obviously <laughs> forgot. He's a realist. He's like, we're not doing this. You know what? Go get batteries with Danny. We don't need you out here messing around. Yeah, he's like, your dad has this thing called the Force, too. He probably knows that you're thinking about this. Yeah. Especially based on what we see in the later movies. Like true, true. Force walkie-talkie is more yeah. like Force FaceTime. Yeah. And then <laughs> then it becomes Force, like, we're both here. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the ghost. <laughs> Dude, I want to so, ride one of those. So he goes with C-3PO and gets knocked out by these thieves that were these sand thieves, I forget what they're called. Obi-Wan finds him. Tuscan Raiders. Oh, thanks. Yeah, we got the captions. Duh. And Obi-Wan lays it on this guy everything. He's like, oh yeah, I knew your dad. And he was a Jedi, but he kill- he fought and died against a guy named Darth Vader. Which, guys, watching these over and over, you start, you know everything, so you just know everything. The first time you see this, this would be so. This would be like, um, like no wonder it's such an amazing story. It's yeah, because like, they don't tell you the truth about really anything, but it's not really a lie either. It's just foreshadowing for this much l- larger story point. That spoiler alert: Darth Vader's his dad. You know. I also loved how Luke just really. <laughs> I I talk about this a little bit in that bonus content I talked about recording, but he. He really just takes the news that the force is real, like fine. Like if Uncle Ben has been like uh Uncle Ben's like or Obi Wan is like, Yeah, you can use it if it flows through you and you can talk you can use it to fight and it's a mystical power that bonds all of us. And Luke's like, Oh. Makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Could you imagine like learning that like magic is actually real? Like right now? He's like, what oh. people are wizards. Yeah. It's like, all right, yeah, that checks I would, out. I would react a little bit differently. Totally agree. So then we get the message from Leia. To Obi-Wan. It's like, hey, we need you to come back. My dad did you a favor back during the Clone Wars. And this is basically like right, right where they pick up. You pick up from like episode three. And it's like, you time to come back and fight. And I mean, he's old. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he's old. He tells Luke to come with him. <clears throat> This is where it gets crazy. <laughs> Strap in. <laughs> Just going to retell Star Wars to you real quick. <laughs> Ben's like, you got to come with me to this Alderaan system because Darth Vader's up to something. Definitely not your dad. <laughs> and Luke's like, I can't do that. I really am trying to go to college. <laughs> and Ben gets upset. Like He's like, okay. He's like, do whatever you think is right. He like crosses his arms and everything. And then he goes, do whatever you think. He's like, all right, well, I, I need to run back home because if you're t- saying people are coming to kill us, my aunt, my aunt and uncle could be in danger. Well, <laughs> oh. why are you laughing? Because it's so tragic. Their dead skeletons are laying there burning. And like he was just talking to him about college like 10 minutes ago. And it's so it's so sad. But I was like, well, how tragic. And then he just he, <laughs> he takes that that speeder back. And it, he walks up to Obi Wan, and he almost like does Charlie Brown. He's just like, he's like, I'll go, because <laughs> his parents are dead. Essentially, yeah, really sad. Yeah. This is the bar scene, dude. Why does every person in the bar look like a, a nutsack? <laughs> like this guy on the screen now. There's like other people, the, the guys that are doing playing like the instruments. Mm-hmm. The, uh, the weird alien like, eyes. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, like oboes. Yeah, yeah those are, that's a looks like a rock and joint though. Yeah. Every time I see this movie, I want to go to this place. Yeah, that's exactly what I was going to say. I just, yeah. I really want to go there. Do you guys know if it's part of the Galaxy's Edge? I want to yes. say yes. It's yeah. got to be. I, right. I went there because that's like the number one place you want to go. The cantina. I yeah. went last year by myself on a work trip. It was interesting. 
but what you went? Yeah, I went last year. You've been there. Yeah. And uh well, you were like I want to go Disneyland. There. You've actually well how was it fun? I I'm didn't, just jealous. I, did, I only like looked like this is like a, a restaurant thing and there was like a line so I didn't get in get in there. Um but the whole thing is awesome. I was there for a work trip and I got my flight was in super early on Monday and I was like, "Oh, I know what I'm doing the rest of the day." And I just went to Disneyland all by myself. Um well, that's pretty cool. Is a one day pass expensive? It's like 150 <laughs> bucks, but Shit. I was like, oops, it was a long day. It was worth it because when you're by yourself, I mean, you can you can skip to the front of the line on everything. Oh, I would, I'd be just fine on my own. Yeah. Like, I mean, if I would love to, I'd rather go with Carrie, but if, if I was like on a work trip like that and I was going to go for the day, I'd be like, I'm going to have it so much fun today. Yeah. Like the Space <clears> Mountain <throat> is now converted to like a Star Wars ride, and I rode that like five times and just. Well, that's on my list. But yeah. the Star Wars area was was very cool the ride was awesome a lot of fun i did that twice and like you can it's just super interactive I, I, you need to go sometime for sure oh it's on the list whatever that's like a normal thing where we can be around that many people but well you know it'd be a really cool episode to like put together a lot of footage for me wearing like a gopro there one oh day my God, so if yes. somebody wants to like sponsor like a trip there and send me and my fiance <laughs> out there we're all ears just looking for deals i'd like that <laughs> Look, just like a uh, Jack Nicholson out here, like Did you get the you, you deal. Get the DLD. <laughs> <laughs> but they do have like they were selling like this nasty like green and blue milk stuff that was like supposed to be yeah, drinks come, from like the bar. But I was like, I'm that's the stuff, a big line. That's, I was like, no way. <laughs> that's what Luke Skywalker drinks in. Uh, yeah, yeah. In uh, the first of the trilogy yeah. or the second, whenever he's in the movie for the yeah. first time. Yep. Um, I always wondered on this part. Just like setting up this universe a little bit and thinking about it. Like Obi-Wan meets up with Chewbacca at the bar and he's like, what's up, Chewbacca? And I was like, does he know Chewbacca? Because Yoda knew Chewbacca in the prequels. But I was like, I don't remember if Obi-Wan met him. But either way, he talks to him. Then gets to Han Solo. We meet Han Solo for the first time, which they talk about this character a lot in the bonus features. How like this group of characters was everything. Mm -hmm. It really did make the story because they were like... Luke Skywalker really is like this wholesome, virtuous hero, but you, Han Solo is who you want to be. Yeah, for sure. Such a cool dude. Coolest guy in the galaxy. Let's see if we get a shot. Surely they. Yeah, here he is. I mean, isn't that the big question of who shot first? Yeah, and I I put that in that little that bonus content too. I really explore it, but we're I want to hear your thoughts on this because I've always been curious. It's always been like a thing, right? It's always been like, who shot first? Yeah. I've never really been in on the joke. I'm like, oh, okay. So it's like, just who shot first? But I also understand, like, if Han Solo... If he shot first, first he's a different person. He's a totally different person. Okay. Well, I'll tell you this. Disney Plus, I did the play pause slow motion. Like, I was like, really eagle eye in it. Oh, nice. They shoot at the same time. Do they? It's like... Unless it's a fraction pew, of a pew. millisecond, then I'm going to need pew. some. I need, I need to put I mean, it in my editing software to really see. I don't. To me, it doesn't matter if he shot first or second. He knew that he was pulling a, something. And he's, he's a rebel. He's out there. He's trying to live his own life. I mean, it doesn't matter to me if he shot first or second. I Personally. Agree. I agree. Totally. And he, he says he's, I mean, he's in it for the money. Mm -hmm. 17,000 units they're going to pay him. That's a lot of units. You could buy your own ship with that. That's what Luke says. We go 17,000 years. You can buy your own shit. Well, yeah, you and Danny are hawking batteries over there. You don't even know what I'm doing. <laughs> it, they didn't show a picture of it. Another how another way that Luke like really just is like, okay. They pull up and the stormtroopers are like, what are you guys doing? And Obi-Wan's like, you don't need to see our passes. <laughs> and he's like, I don't need to see your passes. He like does the Jedi mind trick thing. Yeah. And they're walking into the bar, and Luke goes, hey, how'd you do that? And Ben goes, the Force can really manipulate the mind of a weak-willed person. And Luke goes, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was okay. like, no questions. You're connecting a lot of dots for me, Obi-Wan. <laughs> <laughs> this Force thing's starting to make a lot of sense. Job of the Hut. It's a big CGI version. I know this is also a big... Topic, I will say this, George Lucas flat out says it in the bonus features. 
it's kind of covering it's kind of nice talking about the bonus features along the way because I, I remember what triggers it so when they remastered the films i never really understood what that meant mm-hmm. remastering the films meant like taking the original film and running it through like a press machine like at a factory like the most like expensive sophisticated equipment and chemicals to clean the film and get it like 60% better than what it was in 1977. Huh. That's, that's how that's how they remaster it. And then what? Then they take the original footage and they have to run it through like a different machine to to build out the 3D layers because they did release these films in 3D. That's crazy. It's insane. That being said, George Lucas said at that point when it was like very clear we're going down this road of remastering, he saw a lot of opportunities to do a lot of things that he yeah. could never yeah. do in 75 or whatever they were making this. Mm-hmm. That's why when we were talking about the budget earlier, I was like, <laughs> it's the 11 million seem very low, but that's for what the original was. And like, I've, I think we've all seen mostly the remastered. So it's hard to like the original, you might think like, oh yeah, that looks pretty cheap. Like the job of the hut's the perfect example. Like he looked like a big sack of potatoes. And the movies on VHS, I watched them. I feel like it was probably 10 years ago. Someone had them and we put them in and they are, they're like dark. Mm-hmm. You can like hardly even see things I mean, sometimes. I mean, a lot of us had them, but I had the three cassette VHS oh, with yeah. all three back to back different colors and stuff. And I thought that was the coolest thing. But yeah, they're now looking back at them. Are they up there? That's probably all six in one, Blu-ray, one package. Blu-ray oh. DVD though. So, yeah. but yeah, I mean, it's crazy how much he done. How much he did was so little. Oh yeah, and the sets, like when they show like the sets they made, those the like the mini sets to make things huge. The they're amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And have you you guys ever seen the Netflix show where they or I forgot what the name of it was, but they like focus on a certain like toy brand or like toy mm-hmm. like Yeah. Like niche or whatever for each episode. Star Wars was one of them. It was mm. very interesting to watch. Like just how much money they made off every little thing in this like capitalized like huge mm-hmm. toys are everything just like yeah just like batman yeah batman <clears throat> wrestling where you get all your merch your monies so this guy i've always had a thought about this it doesn't say his name i don't tarkin? think tarkin oh it does say that tarkin he's the he's the the general like like the lead general for the emperor the what are they called? What's the bag? What's the whole group's called name? The Empire. So he's like one of the main generals. He like him and Darth Vader are kind of like almost almost equal, but I guess Darth Vader's obviously the top. This is the guy they brought back to life in the new movies, like with complete CGI hmm. and like he used his voice and everything. Really? And I just thought like you know obviously they did that a little bit with Carrie Fisher to help finish the movie. Very different situation, I feel like, because mm-hmm. she was. You know, alive for most of making the movie and had probably a lot of input. Whereas, but this was like a weird conversation, like calling this kid's like dad, son or something and be like, hey, are you cool if we bring your dad back on screen? And like seeing him alive, like talking, you say it's not a big deal, I but really think that. about that. Really think about that if it's like a friend of yours. I like mean, like if a- you were dead and then like I see a video of you like walking around in a park, I'd be like, well, that's totally <laughs> what a liar he's, not, he's alive he's not, he's not oh my dead. god you throw me a frisbee and it just goes through my holographic body you go to catch it it's like <laughs> wow anyway i just i didn't just, even know that literally so just, just as a conversation piece you know i mean they did i don't the, really have an opinion on I mean, it to go back to the hunger games they did some of that with philip seymour hoffman because he died before the second one didn't know that never knew that because in the third one they say like in remembrance of philip seymour hoffman they had to cgi him in a couple wow. of things i forgot mm-hmm. he died yeah. Sorry, Philip. Yeah, R.I.P. Um, this scene is also wild because this is where a couple things. They have a uh, machine poke Leia with like a needle. And it's like a truth serum. <laughs> and it's like, I remember even as a kid and even like as an adult, like just that's like the scariest scene. It's just like, <laughs> it's that robot and it's just like, and Leia's like, don't and then like they do <laughs> they do and they not only do they but the the camera like shoots from the hallway and the door closes and i was like wow even they closed the door <laughs> like we can't even see it <laughs> i was like no one's like why the door close 
<laughs> um, well, the truth serum like, doesn't work, and they bring her out, and they're like, where's the rebel base? That's the whole thing that's mm-hmm. going on. And where'd you send the plans? Because that's from Rogue One. And Darth Vader says, like, the serum didn't work, and I'm like, well, yeah, because she like has the Force. This is like foreshadowing already. Yeah. There's more to Leia. Yeah. But also, I was like, well, I've played devil's advocate. Wouldn't like Darth Vader be like, I mean, if you met face to face, I thought you'd be like... You look a lot like your mom. Or some yes, exactly. Hmm. Obviously. But like he has no idea, so maybe it just didn't even cross his mind. If she doesn't tell them, then she said they say we have a Death Star and it can destroy the whole planet. <laughs> and we have a planet at your planet. And she says, oh, okay, I'll tell you. She find we find out she lies. It was the wrong it wasn't the truth. But he does blow up Alderaan. What a dick. Yeah. I mean. Like, how, well, many, how many kids did he kill right there? Well, you know you know what he's, he's all about. That, he's got that bloodlust, man. <laughs> he's like, he's like, is there any way we could get all the adults off the planet? And they're like, what? It weighs it down and doesn't work for me. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's not really my thing, killing adults. <laughs> Like people that have sinned and probably did wrong, let's get them out of there. But let's leave the innocent one just right in this little pool. Just all the kids. <laughs> Obi Wan back on the Millennium Falcon's like he goes like oh he's like I just feel like a whole planet died. <laughs> <laughs> Ow! He's like oh he's like <laughs> yep hip sacking up. That's a planet. A planet just went e- down. Either that or it's gonna rain. <laughs> I got Children that every blood. day. And he's training Luke a little bit on the ship. Luke's got the, the lightsaber and the thing shooting at him. Another point, pl- point, plot hole maybe. Not plot hole, just like a weird thing. Han Solo is like watching Luke, si- Luke with this lightsaber. And he doesn't even like react to it. I'd have been like, what's that? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, but maybe he's seen one before. Yeah. It might oh. not be his first time. They're all, like, he's probably seen them all over the galaxy. Yeah, he's been around. He's been around. Yeah. Yeah, he definitely has. Then Obi-Wan's like, time for more Force lessons. It can also help you see without seeing. And he puts the blaster shield down on his helmet. And the only thing I think to myself is, what's this helmet for? Like, why? when would you ever wear the helmet? If you can't see (laughs) it. It was down to here. And I was like, when do you wear that? Holes in 1977. I don't know. I don't know. Where do you wear that helmet? And what's it for? To tan? <laughs> Blind date? <laughs> no, it's good though. I then, got he, then he gets the force though. Getting the hang of it. This is where I was like, Han Solo really loves money. He does so much. He's He's like, I'll break. This is like breaking into the king's house. Yeah. They kind of get, they get like sucked in, I think. So they didn't really have a choice. But then he like, he's like, all right, I'll help you. Get I guess it. I'm in. I'm in. And we find out it's really because he's a good person. I mean, I think. Trash compactor. This part scared me when I was younger. This is the most iconic part. I feel like yeah. is what you remember about the movie, at least for me, like as a kid. Yeah. This part scared me. Like, I, yeah, watching it today and stuff. It, like, I felt that when, when they're like, I can feel something like. He's like moving at his leg. I was like, "Oh man, that's that's frightening." Even though you know they're going to be okay, but it's still still. Yeah, this is these are the three main characters. Got me. But I mean, you've never. I mean, especially for first time watchers, like what is going to happen? Yeah. I try to do that, like going to see this in theaters in 1977. Like you don't know what the world is going to happen. This would be a ride. Yeah. He's like C three PO. We're in the trash compactor, and then (laughs) and then he's like he's like get us out, and R two D two gets it. And then they're all like, yeah, yeah. And C-3PO's like, they're dying. They're <laughs> screaming. They're dying. <laughs> one of the best characters, for sure. Which one? C-3PO. Oh, yeah. And Chewbacca. That's my favorites. All right. They're still on the Death Star, leading up to this battle between Obi-Wan Kenobi his the old master of R.I.P. What's his name again? Anakin. 
No, Obi-Wan Kenobi's the actor name. Oh, Alan, Alec Guinness or something like that? Yeah. Ooh, Alan Guinness? Yeah. This is who Obi-Wan will be playing. That's about right. And, I mean, this is the last time they've seen each other since uh, Obi-Wan cut his legs off and made him into Darth Vader, essentially. I have the high ground! <sighs> That's a movie. Yeah. That was a... It still gets me every time. Like, that scene is so powerful. The music, that Red Planet, where it ends up being like his, like our Darth Vader's yeah. home, which you get to see yeah. in Rogue One. That was cool. Wow. I forgot about that. Mm-hmm. It's like his tower. It all, like, led to this. And as a first-time watcher, you just, you, it's two w- space wizards fighting. <laughs> space yeah. wizards. That's what it like, is. But, like, for us, like, I mean, that's what's so great about these movies, I think. Yeah. Is, like... Now you go back and they're like, it's almost like an endless loop. Mm-hmm. You can watch it forever. Even though those prequels. Can't watch those forever. Did you know that in the original script, they were called laser swords? I mean, that makes a lot of sense. I didn't know that. I just I didn't know that. Because that of the bonus sense. content on Disney+. Plus. <laughs> <laughs> I wish that was still the thing. I mean, do you guys have any laser swords back in the day? Uh, I had like the... Definitely like the cheapest version, yeah. like the one where you would have to go, and it, was and just... it would shoot out, and the laser was but then like, fat at the bottom. It, mine didn't even have color. It was just like it was oh, like man. it was like that Cooley cup on Logan's thing, that color, that blue. I, I like... had I had the Darth Maul one. Just would re- I recreated that scene in my front yard with my neighbors like a thousand times. Probably the nerdiest thing I've ever done, honestly. Now that I look back on it. It sounds like fun as hell. I mean, honestly, I've always wanted one of those legit ones. And I went to Comic-Con in St. Louis, Wizard World last year. And they had like a lightsaber stand. How much were those? Oh, I, I didn't even. Hundreds? I, yeah, hundreds at least. I think like they started at like around four or five hundred. They had a thing at Disney where you could build your own. Just like. Just like a Jedi does. Yeah. That's the thing. Are you serious? As a Jedi, you're supposed to build your own lightsaber always. It's like build a bear, but I get to build my lightsaber. <laughs> that sounds like the most coolest thing ever. Yeah. But I was right. like, I'm so a... So, spoiler, Obi-Wan does not make it through the battle. Yeah. yeah like, that's a... Uh, yeah, he doesn't make it through the battle. We find out that Jedis turn into nothing when they die, kind of. Poof. And Luke sees it. Very tragic. I always love to, uh, I think it happens earlier in the film, but Family Guy already made fun of this years ago. But Han Solo's like, don't worry, I have some maneuvers. And the plane's like. <laughs> I've been practicing these. <laughs> and like there's, there's it's like oh, pew, 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 pew. And it, the ship's just like. <laughs> That's that fam- the great family episodes. Oh my God. Great episodes. Every single one is so good. They nailed it. Like that. That's like for me. Like that's a parody that will live forever yeah. itself. I like. I like this part of Family Guy too, when they're like, "Okay, here's the plans of the Death Star. All we have to do is take the smallest ship that we have, take it into the smallest <laughs> vessel, and use the smallest bullet we have to shoot the smallest base of this whole thing." And that guy goes, "No, you can't do that. It's impossible." And Luke goes. It's not impossible. I used to hit swamp rats like that all the time back in Tatooine. <laughs> and Family Guy, take over from there. Family Guy. The guy, the guy goes, hey, can I talk to you for a second? <laughs> and he pulls him over and goes, hey, uh, thanks for calling me out in front of everybody here. <laughs> like some kid wearing a robe. Like, I'm a pilot. <laughs> it's embarrassing me in front of my leader. Like, <laughs> what are you doing here? Get it together. But who who built the Death Star and it's like, you know what? This thing is too sweet. I'm going to put one thing in there that could possibly blow this whole thing up. Rogue One. Why do they put it there? Tell us. He does in Rogue One. Well, they te- well it's because that guy who ends up, who's like anti-hero. You don't know what side he's on. He's a spy. He's the guy that the master designer for the Death Star. You learn in the beginning of Rogue One that he has left the Federation or whatever because he's like, these guys are not cool. <laughs> <laughs> I thought these were my bros. I thought I was building a space station. Then they were like, we need the biggest gun there's ever been. Yeah. We're building a murder I wanna, planet. <laughs> I want to explode thousands of children at the same time. <laughs> with the push of a button. <laughs> like, I don't want to push multiple I don't buttons. even need to this do is, the work. This is always what defines like who's on whose side. It's like. You work with Anakin Skywalker for so many years until you finally have that talk in his den where he's like, 
you got to be okay with me killing kids. <laughs> <laughs> How old are you? Not in a, like a weird way, but like, oh, 25? <laughs> Not a kid. I guess okay. you could come work for me. Yeah. The older, the better. Do you have a conscience? No? Okay. So here's your application. Well, you learn that he built... This guy is forced to come back and work for Darth Vader. So he puts in... So he sends... And he did abandon his whole family for it. Rogue One's a great yes. film. So that's why. Star Wars fans out there, this is probably the weakest dive you ever had. This is just us talking about our favorite parts, but... <laughs> I'm having a blast. <laughs> um... This is where they're like, Han Solo, come help us fight the Death Star. Han's like, no. I feel like he just said no so he could come back and be the hero. Yep. Out of nowhere. But it is an awesome, it's like the yeah. best part. It's always cool when that Millennium Falcon shows up and the music hits. I will say these films also look amazing. For sure. Like, oh, I'm, watching this on Dis- I'm watching these on Disney Plus and I'm like, these ships look like they're like in a, you know, a newer movie. The X-Wings. Oh, there's I like this part. Luke's like at the uh, at the thing getting into his X-wing, and like his buddy, somebody comes up. He's like, "Luke, what are you doing here?" And Luke's like, "Hey, Paul, <laughs> are you ready to die?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you ready for this? I was like, "Man, this space is small." And Leia kind of setting up her becoming that general. She's there in the war room. Luke hits inside the Death Star. Epic chase between Death Darth Vader and him. Darth Vader on his tail, and you hear for him say for the first time, "The Force is strong in this one." So he starts setting up like the how the Force works, and that he can feel it, and he blows up the Death Star. Pew pew pew. In this part, <laughs> have you guys seen the video where they take away the music from the award ceremony? No, it's hilarious. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> Like I don't, I would almost put it on here, like, but like it's 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 just go look it up yourself. Just look up award ceremony, New Hope without music, and it's just like the door opens. It's like, Did I just walk there. <laughs> they like get up on the stage and Leia takes the thing, and she's like. And then, she, then they turn around, and it's completely silent. <laughs> and Chewie goes, <laughs> and everybody goes, <laughs> There's no build-up, no setup. If like. I had three wishes, one of them would be to be able to do a good Chewbacca sound. Oh, yeah, that was bad. You just struggled hard. Oh. I, I have, I got nothing. I mean, My we, problem is I'll always go for it. I don't even, I don't even know what's yeah. going to come out the other end. Do we need to dive into that? One of your three wishes would be to make a <laughs> Chewbacca sound? <laughs> <laughs> hey, send us in uh, your best Chewbacca sound. We'll, we'll play him on here. Oh, that's a great idea. That's a great idea. We'll even, we'll give you a, we'll do some kind of prize or shout out. Send us your Chewbacca. When we, when Logan has a soundboard, you could possibly have a spot. <laughs> I got it. That's on the list. It's on the list of things to get. Um. All right. Well, that's Star Wars. Why don't we take a quick break? We'll come back, give our final thoughts, and we'll talk about what's coming up next on most of superheroes. So we're gonna take a quick break, and we'll be right back. We're back. Um. All right. Well, let's wrap up Star Wars real quick, guys. Uh, thanks for going through that with me. I'm glad that we uh broke it back open. Final thoughts. Let me see if there's any more. No, that was the last picture. Um. What were you just saying, Andy, about the cantina? You said yeah. that there was like a racist moment. Yeah, the, the they first go in and the droids come in with uh, Obi Wan and and Luke, and the bartender yells at him is like, "We don't serve your kind here," and I just was just kind of like, "Damn, racism's just everywhere." Like, <laughs> and we were saying like, if you're gonna be racist in space, like you're gonna have a hard time because like there are a lot of different kinds. Like everywhere you yeah. go, there like every single individual person could be different yeah. <laughs> in a bar. Exactly. We don't serve your kind here. I will say, right after I watched this, I watched the trailer for the next one for uh, Empire Strikes Back. How many years after that did that come out? I don't know, I'll but the trailer got me so pumped and jacked right away. I was like, I want to watch this right now. 1980, so three years after. Childhood favorite of mine. I I was I always lived kind of like in the middle on fan base of this of this franchise i was never like the diehard yeah give me everything i need all the sto- all the toys didn't have the moment didn't even really have a millennium falcon probably but uh 
always loved them. And then now in the, since the prequels, since the new movies, like still going and like, especially with the talk of these star Wars short shows, the Mandalorian, which we know is good. Then you talk about an Obi-Wan Kenobi show. And now this rogue one show. Well, now it's just, you're, you're getting me, especially when I know the Mandalorian is good again. So that's three total star Wars shows. By my count. On other, I like obviously they have cartoon shows and stuff like that. So that I'm not they have a this. lot of side yeah. stuff, comics. Um, the Clone Wars have been like their most successful, <clears throat> I think, animated. Mm-hmm. I know a few people that never watch those that have are very high on them and how talk about how good they are. But I don't, I don't think I'll ever go that deep. It's like seven seasons or something. Yeah, like that. it's a lot. Yeah, maybe one day, whenever it's like I maybe. Maybe my fifties, I'll be like, let's get that Star Wars canon out. <laughs> I mean, the Clone Wars on Wick, on Rotten Tomatoes has a ninety three percent, but it's a hundred and thirty three episodes. They're probably short, but still, that's a lot. And like the first four seasons are twenty two episodes a pop. Yeah, I don't think, yeah, uh, not anytime soon for me. But Mm-mm. but the live action stuff, you've got me. What are you guys? What are your thoughts on this movie? How do you, what's it, what does it make you feel whenever you think about Star Wars A New Hope and like you're going to watch it at 31 it in makes, 2020? I mean, I'm, I, f- I feel a lot older than I am. I'm 31, but like, I feel like this was made decades and decades <laughs> before I was born. And then it's only been made 10 years before I was born. Yeah. And I'm like, is that close? And then I looked up Return of the Jedi, 83. I'm like, that's five years from when I was like, it just create. It seems like it's a lot older to me than what it was. That's so true. Yeah. It does feel like it was made a lot longer yeah. than before we were alive. Yeah. But yeah, it's not for that. Sure. No, just like five years. And I'm like, like our parents. Like our parents years. was when this came out. Yeah. And I, that's kind of what I think. And I think it's. I'm like I'm. I'm like you. I've never been huge on it. I mean, I've enjoyed them. I think they're entertaining. Kind of like the Hunger Games. They're entertaining to me. But I'm not die hard. Mm-hmm. I never had a bunch of action figures or anything like that. Yeah. Um, but I mean, did you have the Boba Fett toy? I feel like that. Like a lot of people had like that, like the, Oh, the gun, thing. the gun, the guy, the helmet, yeah. like I had no, but stormtroopers. Res- like we talked about earlier, I respect it. Like it's launched b- a billions and billions and billions of dollars for star Wars theme parks. I don't All think I was movies. a, yeah, I don't think I was a star Wars fan. Like until the, prequels came out and then i watched these i think so like i wasn't a huge like as a guy those probably came out what we were probably we were like in 12 going into high school 13 it was like uh 2004 2005 maybe earlier the phantom menace i thought came out 2001 phantom menace 2001 i'm not even gonna do the math to see what age i was Running around with a lightsaber well, it was 19, in my front yard. It was 19 years ago. <laughs> Phantom Menace came out in 99. 99. <laughs> and it Remember made, all this, this, like the soda cans? You talked about that. Like the yeah, merch. Taco Bell. That's Taco what Bell. I mean. yeah. it's in my mind. It made a billion dollars, FYI. <laughs> the Phantom Menace. Damn, I want Taco Bell now. Yeah. Get to dinner time. <laughs> well, I'm glad that we're talking. <clears throat> I'm glad we're talking about on this show because I think we're... You know, probably a lot of fans are out there that are like us, and now we have this new content coming out. If you're got, if you're gonna have me living and breathing in a good show like Mandalorian, you, I mean, I'll talk. I'll, I'll, I mean, I'm probably gonna watch the other films now. Yeah, just because I feel like it's a really good setup, especially since Mandalorian takes place after the third film, so like five years after. Like, I, I thought I feel like everybody should watch that. I should watch that, and then I'm definitely gonna watch Mandalorian. I mean, we've already talked about that, but. We'll save what's coming up later, but you know that's that's coming up on October thirtieth. Mm-hmm. We're about we're just like five weeks out. Yeah, that's getting wait. close. Yeah, I watched I watched every single Star Wars movie in release order before the the newest one just came out, mm-hmm. whatever that episode nine or whatever. So I even watched like Solo and everything, and it was it was really fun. To, I probably did it in like one week, jam packed, but it was it was a lot of fun. Very worth it. Nice. It's a lot of time. Mm-hmm. All right, guys. Well, thanks for diving into it with us. Any final thoughts on Star Wars? New Hope? I mean, it's worth a watch. I mean, yeah, for sure. I think it's one of those films that you can always put on. Yeah, and I think it's something that you have to. I'll put out the, ra- put out the rating. Are you going to give it a 10? <clears throat> if I rated this movie based on how I feel about it today, September 24th, 2020, I just watched it yesterday. 
out of a 10 point scale for me, I would rate it at yeah, solid nine, a nine point movie. Like, I mean, I have a really fun time the whole time. The only reason I would even take off a point is just because it's not a perfect movie to and there's me. There's cheesiness and stuff. There's some cheesiness. Your... There's some like weird story points. And I point out some of the yeah. plot holes and you can do that all day with movies. Um, at the end of the day, it's like sure. how it makes me feel. Yeah. And when I rewatch movies, like it's hard for me not to give like Thor Ragnarok a 10. Yeah. There's no such thing as a 10, but. Exactly. And like, I got to remember that and I need to like get my own scale calibrated. Yeah. So I'm hoping, help, I'm hoping talking with guys like you fans out there, we start like doing some of these rating systems. I want to like hone in on my own yeah. personal scale. All right, cool. Um, all right. Well then that's star Wars guys. Thanks for sticking with us that for that one. Um, a deep dive on star Wars, new hope, more star Wars stuff to come. Um, before we wrap up the show, just want to talk about what's coming up. Um, I don't have a sound bite for this one yet, but maybe we do like coming on up. <laughs> it's the same sound. <laughs> it's the same it's a different word. Just, I don't know. I'm oh just trying God. to. I'm just trying to say it. Cool. We gotta work on. We're this. coming on up. <laughs> we gotta work to on the that. news. All right, uh, more on the boys weekly drops on Amazon Prime. You can definitely watch for more content coming out of those right now. It seems like my favorite way to talk about those shows is watching it myself and doing a live watch where you watch me watch it. Um, I feel like it's the best way for me to recap what's happened. And whenever you got a weekly drop, why not take the time to really understand what's going on with these characters? Plenty on the boys. Um, and if you're not aware and you're a first-time listener, we already have three other episodes on them. So go on and find them on our uh, MostlySuperheroes.com. Mandalorian and Star Wars. I was already thinking about this, guys. I think we should just make it like one big episode that we plan out in advance. Because we talked about doing a Star Wars mm-hmm. episode. We want to get Jake in here to kind of give us the run of the town, what's going on in Star Wars. He, he actually watches the Clone Wars, and then whoever else we might we might get like do some prep work for that one, so there's enough content. But part of that, I'm going to rewatch the Mandalorian. So I don't know if you guys will get time in your schedule to do so. You don't have to, but I'm definitely going to, and I can maybe take us through what happened as we prepare for season two, drop on October 30th. I'll be rewatching for sure. You gotta. You have to. I think I in my mind and you have to. <laughs> it doesn't TV. feel like it doesn't feel like it was that long ago. Like that that, that even came out. You need to trade Rachel. You just watched Hunger Games. Now True. you watch Mandalorian. Has she seen it? I don't think so. Carrie loves it. She knows who Baby Yoda is. It's great. So that might be a good trade off. Raised by Wolves. It was my featured show today on what you watching. And because it was in here today and I realized how much I love talking about it. Um I'm going to talk about it some more. So I'm going to let you know when this that's done. I think I got like a couple episodes left. I'll probably do a deep dive on it. Um, and I'll at least, I'll do a spoiler free rating too. And kind of give you guys a awesome. lowdown. That way you can hear about it. Don't worry about spoilers. But for you, those, for those out there that are watching it, we'll definitely have an episode where we just recap the season one. Movie ranking tournament event is what I wrote. I mean, that's kind of what we're spitballing right now. Something to get people involved and, be thinking about kind of a mar- we didn't have March Madness this year, so this is kind of <laughs> like a new get your bracket fix or something. But we don't know what we're gonna do yet, right? With this, no, I want it. I, w- I know I want it to be. Yeah, I wanted to. Uh, we were saying movies was, was our first idea. Like let's put movies up against each other with a ranking system that inevitably chooses a winner. But what I want it to be, I mean, doing stuff for fun is is great. But like with a purpose is like I want people to feel. Like you said, March Madness. I want like there to be like a stake to it, and we're, like we might figure out some prizes and contest part, but I want it to be fun for you guys that are listening. We could do and something that we could all do together. Like we could do Twitter polls, those two movies, and kind of see. We could oh, start fifty eight forty two. This movie moves on. We could do and that. Then we talk about so like we do an episode a week. We talk about those two movies. You vote the next show. We reveal the winner, and then we move on to the next round of games. Yeah, because you have to do it like on an ongoing basis. Yeah. It's not like a one day thing, unless it comes down to like the final day is maybe like the final four or yeah. something. Final four, we could do them one, but we can't run like through this. however many. If we have sixteen movies, that show would be f- seven hours long if we talked about every movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we can't do that. Yeah, no, it's got to be more of a a quantifiable thing that can happen in between episodes so that when we come in, you guys have like a good update. What's going on. You get an update on maybe your voting that you've been doing. So we'll meet offline. 
I thought about doing like an episode where we plan it all out, but that just sounds like a nightmare because we'll have like the microphone. We need like to clear this table off, come in here and just like yeah. have some beers and like just hang out and like think about it. So it gets the we give it its due diligence. We don't want to rush this. It should just be something that gives you something to do for a couple months and some movies to watch, some ways to vote, and a little bit of fun. And um, but the questions throw some inputs in there because we have we have a blank slate with this. Like we want to do some type of tournament, but we don't know which movies we want to watch. Like, do we go to IMDb and put in superheroes and then get the top sixteen superhero movies that are rated on there and throw them in a bracket? Well, what do we do? Mm-hmm. Give us yeah. some ideas with that. We're open to anything, really. Yeah, like do we do, like do we pick like a, like a, treat it like an award show style? We have ten categories. Do we have brackets like DC's one side? Marvel's one side or yeah what's the like, battle between like is it between like truly the best movie or is it like genre battle almost yeah I'm I'm a degenerate and I love gambling and competition of any kind so I'm, I'm ready for this maybe we could, yeah don't you've used DraftKings before right oh yeah so maybe we could steal from like one of their games like not steal but again learn from people out there that know this stuff Andy we need your input like you gotta we'll think about some of your most out. favorite games figure something and like out. just put a movie spin on it so more to come. Watch for that on an upcoming episode. We're, we're going to announce that live to you guys on an episode for sure, but we'll tease it out. VHS Watch Party Contest. I already talked about this. Got the VHSs. Go to our Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. You can vote for your two favorite films out of the 30 films we have. I'm going to live watch it. You get to join us, and the winner of the drawing gets 25 bucks in uh, food delivery. I mentioned it earlier before this last piece, um, but we do have our first piece of exclusive content. We did Star Wars A New Hope today. You do get that 17 minute audio clip if you want to go check it out. Um, I called, I gave it a name. It's a piece of content. I came up with it. I need to like copyright it, I think. It's called a cannonball. And the reason I call it a cannonball is because we do the deep dives like we did today. Andy and I did a shallow dive of Doom Patrol. Well, this was only like 17 minutes. I just like hopped in, boom, and I hopped back out. Yeah, I like that. And I spelled cannon like cannon. Like comic book cam. I was wondering. Oh, okay. That's, I like that. It didn't look right with the way it was written. I know. It was like, it was, and I'm sure people were like, purpose. this idiot misspelled it. And I'm like, you're the idiot. Damn. <laughs> this glare thing <laughs> too. Like you had a, cha- a reason behind it. <laughs> Damn. Good smart man. Yeah. The, I knew that the real, the real nerds out there would be like, I see what he did. <laughs> I love a good pun. Absolutely. We should we could do a whole episode on puns. Um, and I had an idea this week, and I think you guys are going to be totally on board. But I'm excited, and I want to get it on the calendar. The answer is yes. Maybe it's a live Before episode. Before you I don't ask know. the question, the answer is yes. I figured. <laughs> we do a Christmas episode sometime in December, obviously, you know, closer to Christmas. We can do sweaters. We can do whatever. We'll have decorations. We'll do the whole thing. Maybe play some Christmas games or something. And we do the movie, like we did today, another deep dive. Batman Returns. Yep. I mean, we're all in. That... I mean, because you said it last time, and it really got oh, the wheels turning. Greatest Christmas movie of all time. <laughs> yeah. I can't wait for Christmas. I feel like Die Hard fans are like about that, too. But Bruce Willis said on his roast that Die Hard's not a Christmas movie. Okay. So that's all, all right. it took for me was to say, like, well, then it's not. Agreed. And if you want to challenge it, you can go look up that roast, because he, he said it. I love it. <laughs> um, are oh. you guys down for that? Do like a Christmas episode? We'll yeah. do some stuff. I have just the shirt for that. <laughs> I haven't picked out my outfit yet, but yes. <laughs> I, got, I got targeted for some superhero sweaters Did on you? Instagram. I didn't get them yet, but I was like, oh. it's only a matter of seeing this two or three more times. <laughs> now that you talked about it, it's probably going to show up on all our phones too. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, for sure. Especially when we put this on the internet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, lots coming up on the show, guys. Um, on a personal note, I closed on my house this week. Hey, congrats. thank you. Cheers. So, cheers, cheers, cheers on that. Cheers, I think cheers. you, friends of mine and people close to me, maybe even on the show, we've talked we've talked about it, but it happened, and the lady and I are taking a few days off, and uh, we're gonna take some some much needed R and R. But as far as you're concerned, the listener, you shouldn't have any uh, interruption in content. I think we have at least the last two episodes will be out audio. So if we're a little delayed on the video. Bear with me. Just know that we're, you know, taking some much needed rest. Been working hard for the last three months, and uh, but we're uh, excited to hit the ground running when we get back next week. 
Um, and plenty more to come. So, Andy, Mike, any final thoughts before we sign off for today? Future is bright, my friend. The future is bright. Until next time. Perfect. Uh, thanks again. Uh, yeah, future is bright, Mike. I couldn't agree more. Lots of fun stuff. And uh, check us out at mostlysuperheroes.com, and we'll talk to you guys next time. See ya.